All right, we're going to do a little impromptu scene here. Well, not real little. Half page card, um, satin cardstock, um, which is semi gloss. Okay, but most of the stuff, the imagery, impressions, and coloring are going to be done on both the front and back side of a piece of vellum. Okay, the vellum is. A really dynamic surface and I really enjoy using it um, which I don't do too often but I miss it when I don't do it for a while just because of the um, different um, potential of it okay so um, I recently did a, a beaver scene and um, I thought that that scene would be ideal for this type of application here. So I have to kind of think about it a little bit because I'm doing both backside, front side. So I'm stamping in on three different surfaces. So I have to consider the different layering in here. Hello, Froggy Fresh. Um, and uh, that can be a little bit confusing. It's only really confusing if you haven't done it for a while like me here. But I had to think about um, the sequencing for um, laying down these images and then the blocking out of them that I'm going to do. And uh, hello, Azalea Queen. Hello, PNF. Oops. <laughs> I got used to using the stays on here. Okay, I've usually used the Brilliance um, ink on this vellum here, and that um, dries just fine. But uh, the stays on, I'm just starting to use that more and more. So I'm going to use that just to, I don't know if it's expediting the process, it might be, but I think it's just, I think everyone has stays on or some sort of solvent ink where a lot of people don't have the brilliance. The brilliance you can um, blend with a little bit but I, on this one, I don't really need to do too much blending. Hello, PJB Stamper. Hello, CM Hawkins. All right, so that is going there. And then we'll have another one on the other side. This is what I like about vellum, is that you can stamp and I don't have to do any like um, formal masking, okay, I find, I mean, I'll have to do some work to block out, but it's just, I don't know, I find it easier to block out. Kind of your more complicated masking types of uh, issues, necessities, with just painting it over on the back side of vellum. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll be getting to that pretty soon here. Okay, so uh, what I mean by that is I'm going to have imagery in between these trunks in here. And I don't have to worry about, um, you know, the need for uh, that type of masking um, in between these types of objects with this vellum work. So a lot of you have vellum too, I'm finding. You know, people, I don't know if you've used it recently or you use it on a regular basis. Um, how do you use colors in stays on? What do you mean by that there, Candy? By in stays on? Um, by coloring imagery that have been stamped in stays on? I don't know. <laughs> there might be a question you're answering, asking that I don't know the answer of because I haven't used stays on very much. But I don't know, it's just a black impression. I would think it's the same thing, but one of them's more permanent than another. Hello, Jolene. Um, but if anyone knows the answer for candy, please answer. Because uh, I have just been using stays on for, I don't know. It's probably been like two weeks in my life. So, um, glad to hear it, Froggy Fresh. All right. Here's where it gets confusing with vellum. You know, you can start seeing the imagery blotted down on the paper underneath. I have to keep changing my paper out um, quite often. Okay, so um, 
And let me change it out for your benefit too. <laughs> Here, I'll just go like this. Okay, so that uh, beaver dam is going on in the background. I'm going to give this a little bit of a shoreline. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be coloring this imagery on here. I can color it on the front side of the vellum, or I can color it on the back side of the vellum, okay? And you can use whatever medium. I find that colored pencils work really well. I mean, you can use dye-based inks too. But, okay, now here's the thing. I'm going to put some this grassy kind of um, shoreline here to be shore because there will be um, this beaver dam in the background with some water in there. Uh, we'll put some foliage down here as well, I think. Um, but you can color it on the front side or the back side, and then we're going to be blotting it, blocking it off with Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, another great use for that medium there. Okay, so... Now, this is one thing. I mean, the Brilliance ink worked, you know, fine on this surface here, and it dried, but I'm thinking that this stays on ink is already dry, so I don't need to worry about that. All right, adding this in like so. Okay. And I have to make decisions. There's, I don't know, it, it's not like a, a right or wrong decision, but I can do um, some background imagery from this. I can put it right here on the um, front side, or again, I can just put it right here in the back side, and that foliage will be in front of that um, beaver dam. I, I'm thinking about taking advantage of uh, this vellum, though, and I'm thinking about putting some foliage growing up through here and the back side of these trees. Uh, let's color the trees first though, okay? All right, let's do a little bit of both front side and back side. I'm kind of winging it here a little bit if you can't tell because I haven't done this for a while and there's different um, choices that can be made here. Um, and like I said, it's not right or wrong. You can do um, things either way. Um, let's see. Okay, so here's some colored pencils right here. I think I'm going to give myself a little bit of a head start and just lay down some um, green ink in the background because if it's going to be green, why not just slather it with green to begin with uh, in the back side of the vellum? All right. All right, so... I'm kind of making a statement there, but it's kind of also a question <laughs> for me. Uh, yeah, I, can't, I usually do a couple different um, scenes using the same imagery in a couple different ways while I have everything out. Does that make sense? Before I kind of put it all away. So you want to do kind of a, a faster card and easier card. I don't know if this is faster, but it's just a different look. But that's what I've been doing all along on these videos, oftentimes. While it's out, you might as well use it. Why not? You know, that's what I say. Why put it all away, then grab it again? But, and it's also for formatting, too, on uh, videos. Okay, so there is that, but that's what it looks like on the front, okay? That's it applied on the back. It's a little bit more intense and vivid, but you're looking through a translucent surface here, so there it is. It's it's It kind of opens up a lot of different, um, I don't know, design possibilities and considerations too, because you can lay down dye-based inks in the back if you want to, then you can do your colored pencil work on the front of it. You know, it you can do all kinds of different layering with this um, type of, um, oh, I don't know, this type of dynamic, I guess you can call it. Okay, so, all right, now I don't need to do too much of this right now, I, because this is going to be the front side of this. I mean, I do want to get kind of a gist of what it's going to look like, but let's lay down some um, tones on those birch trees. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of these browns and this kind of gray here, okay? And I'm going to do it like this, okay? I'm going to do it on the back side. Okay, I'll, I'll keep pointing out what side's the front, what side's the back. That's what I usually do on the videos too, 
um, when I'm formatting <laughs> those videos, I say back and front, you know. I mean, this could be done on the front, but I'm going to give myself some interior illumination, okay? So lighting will be coming from in here. So on these trees, which will be on the right side of the scene, I'm right side shading them, okay? And remember, we're going to be looking at this coloring through that vellum. So I'm giving it a little bit more than I think I need. Okay, see that right there? I don't know if you can even see it right there. Let me see if I could zoom in a little bit more. I still haven't kind of figured out my camera. Okay, so it looks a little bit darker on this side, right? I mean, it's not a dark color, but... And, and here's the other thing, too. You can color it on the front and the back, okay? So maybe you want some subtlety or something like that, or maybe you want multiple tones and built up. I haven't figured out, like, really great combinations or anything like that. Um, like, use this color on the back and then use these, you know, shading on the front or whatever. Okay, so this is going to be under a canopy of tree um, leaves in this area, so I'm darkening this in to make those trunks look a little bit darker, okay? Up on the top portion of them. Uh, okay, let's see. Let me get some answers, uh, questions here. Um... Uh, Froggy Fresh, you're hungry. Froggy Fresh, go have a snack. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining in, PNF. Glad to do these. Always fun time. Okay, Chris asked if I ever find the vellum sort of bleeds and the lines come out funny. I haven't found that with the brilliance. And I'm using the stays on for the first time here, Chris. So I haven't found that with the vellum that I'm using at all. It's been very, very crisp. But those two inks, though, they have something in common, that they're fast drying inks, okay? So, uh, okay. My camera's a little bit wobbly in terms of focusing in, but I, I think you can tell that's, that's a pretty crisp image right there. But again, you know, stays on ink. It dries practically on contact, so I haven't found that problem at all. I know that um, other people have had different experiences with different types of vellum, though, um, from times that I've posted in the past. I've said, they've said certain inks don't dry, and I haven't had any problem at all. I haven't come across really any issues um, when it came to vellum in terms of any of the applications that I've done so far that I can recall, okay? Um, but I seem to be recalling that, like, people would say something, and I'd said, well, I didn't have any problem with that at all. And then someone would say some other type of medium that they had um, kind of a conflicting type of, uh, or uh, not working in harmony with the medium surface combinations. But I, I, nothing they said um, were things that I encountered. So I do know they exist, though, um, when certain medium is combined with um, different brands of vellum, I guess. Okay, um, let's see. All right, let's get on here. Okay, so, okay, so that's a little... <laughs> I can't hold this up too much because you need to see it against the white piece of paper here. Okay, so that's a little bit of a... That was like slate blue, but I do like a little bit of warmth in my birch. I mean, the birch are, you know, I mean, I want them to be kind of, you know, that white, you know, characteristic tone, but I don't want them just stark, kind of anemic white here. So I am going in with this on here, okay. And we're going to be blocking off most of this with Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And it's actually a really fun way to use um, that type of um, medium on there. Okay, so let's do some of the additional... Uh, let me see. Let me figure out what I'm going to use in here. Um, maybe I'll go with something 
dark. Maybe, uh, okay, I was going to go with some color in here, but I'm going to do um, black down here to contrast against that um, dam going in back here, okay? But I do want some color up here, all right? So let's get some pens out and add in some of that tone. I'll be doing this both on the front and back side of this vellum. Um, if you're getting a little bit confused here, so am I. <laughs> I gotta remember, okay, the larger grouping is on this side because this, this almost looks, it looks pretty similar. You know, it's hard to tell which side I, you know, did this on. I'm not real confused. I'm just kind of joking around here, but um, there are those considerations there. Okay, here's the thing. If I'm doing um, these colors on the back of this, okay, um, then I have to lay down, if I want a light color in front of a darker one, then you have to lay down the light one first because the darker one is going to cover it up, right? So we have to think about that. And let me see here too. Um, let's go ahead and block off these trees right now, okay? Um, not an instructional video, but an ex explorational video, <laughs> if you haven't joined on before. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be blocking off these, and this is Dr. Martin's Blade Proof White is an opaque white um, watercolor paint, okay? And that's going to, where did my smaller, eh, let me just use this. Um, this is going to make it so that these tree trunks are nice and opaque against anything that I want to stamp in the back of them, okay? Or draw in the back of them in the form of paint, okay? I've used stays on ink. Oh, colored ink. Oh, is that what you were referring to, Candy? I don't have any stays on colored ink. All I have is black. Uh, does anyone else have stays on colored ink? Um, just like that and stays on and brilliance. I don't have like a lot of different colors. Like if stays on had like a metallic, I would probably have had that. Like I have, um, brilliance gold and silver. Um, but I don't have, um, other colors. I have dye based colors, but I don't have, um, anything else other than that. Okay, so this is going on. I'm painting it over. I am painting it over that um, uh, water uh, colored pencil and it's resisting it a little bit, okay? But it should be fine for our purposes here. And just because, you know, the colored pencil is wax so that it is resisting, you know, a water-based medium here. Okay, but it's going on okay. All right, so you're just kind of going in like that, and then you get this opaque application of that, and then you get all the benefit of all the texturing that's on the trees, okay? So again, I love that ability, and I also really love the fact that I don't have to mask off these thin types of... Um, design elements to get something in back of them, okay? Now I'm going to be um, using some spray adhesive to adhere this whole part of the scene onto, you know, another piece of paper like this, all right? Um, I have seen people use glues too on um, videos, so you can look up, um, oh, I don't know what you'd use. You'd use like, the search parameters would be like vellum and adhesives or something like that. And you'll come up with some videos, but someone someone diluted some um, glue and then I think they brayered it on here and that worked really well. Uh, but they were trying to think of some solutions for vellum. Um, personally, I just, spray, I use a spray adhesive from 3M called 
um, Super 77, but there's all kinds of different spray adhesives out there. Um, you know, different brands that you can use. The 3M ones, the 3M spray adhesives are just some of the more, I don't know, well-known ones, at least in terms of the art industry. That's what we always used to use. And for all of our art projects, uh, the professors, you know, would, you know, had us buy all that type of stuff back then. But um, there's different types out there now, too, um, from, you know, 25 years ago. <laughs> All right, laying that down like so, okay. All right, so that is that. I'll show you just how fun that is. I mean, you can lay down anything here that's a little bit wet here, but if you want to do like a moonlit scene with some, you know, birch trees almost in the full light or something like that, but ju that's just to show you that how opaque those are. And then you can put anything you want behind them. You can stamp it on, You can. I can put it on the back of the vellum, or I could stamp it on here, or you can use um, one I've done before is I've um, spray sealed the vellum on top of like a cloud, you know, photograph or something like that. And you get some clouds back in your trees, you know, so there's all kinds of things you can do. You can do it, you know, you can make it yourself or you can use other things like that. And that's really fun with vellum and your Dr. Martin's, uh, we prove white. Okay, so let's get back to some of those um, foliage elements, and I'm going to layer that on here. That's going to be this overhanging kind of element within the scene. And then remember, we can also apply some of these foliage elements on the front side of it for extra depth and, I don't know, creating distance within that, you know, close space like that. Uh, thanks, Chris. Thanks so much. I didn't see the question, okay, I'm not ignoring anything. <laughs> Was there something that someone asked? Do I want to borrow, well, why don't you, I don't know, what's, what's the issue with your stays on colored inks uh, that you've run into and how have you used it? And it sounds like, um, did it not work for you or something like that? Our stays on, I, I take it stay, stays on um, solvent inks. They're all transparent inks, right? So it'd be like using a dye-based ink, except it's fast drying and transparent, right? But I don't know. I haven't had the use for stays on colored inks before. So I've just never bought them. I mean, if I had them, would I use them? Probably. Um... But yeah, I don't know. I haven't I haven't had the uh, found the use for them. I think a lot more people probably I don't know has are people buying stays on inks like colored inks these days. I know when they first came out, a lot of people um, in terms of most inks out there, like a lot of you had if you've been stamping for. 20 years a lot of you had brilliant inks but i've found that recently when i started using them about a year ago for the purpose of um usage on foils you know non-porous surfaces it's like what are sta what are brilliant inks okay from anyone that started stamping or crafting paper crafting in the last 10 years it's like oh um i was just assuming everyone had them because everyone had them uh, back in the day but it's like, if it's like me, it was like, okay, I've had that brilliant zinc, but I haven't used it, you know, like ever, or certainly not in the last 10 years. So I just, I just bought a re filler because mine was completely dry. Okay, but that, that being said, um, what I'm getting at with like Stazon, um, Stazon's a really old ink too, and a lot of people have it, and a lot of people still use it for the black, but I... I don't know, I don't think I've really spoken with anyone that really used a lot of the colored ones in the past. Um, not because they weren't useful, but I, I don't know, I just don't, you know, I just didn't personally know anyone um, using it. I didn't see it used in samples that were submitted to me either. Um, all right, so see, this is how that those leaves are looking. 
And see, I'm put, you know, I'm just laying it down. You can lay it down like this, kind of real haphazard, and because these um, trunks are blocked off, it's not in front of the trunk. Now, I might want some in front of the trunk, so I'll lay down some of those from the front side like that. But I just find that so it's like really fun to be able to do that and to not affect what we're going to be seeing in the overall kind of end result like that. But yeah, yeah, uh, I don't know. I would guess they're still being made. I don't think, st I don't know. But like I said, I don't know too many people that were using like, how many colors are there in uh, like stays on? Um, you know, a lot of people use black, of course, but like I said, um, I don't know of too many people um, that used them. Some people, I don't know, some, some of you might have all of them. Like, um, I know that some people, you know, when we started talking about brilliance inks, um, most people hadn't heard of them or hadn't used them in years. But then I, I came across one person that had, I don't know, 15 different colors or something like that. Or, they, I don't know, some people were buying them, um, you know, kind of before they get discontinued. I was worried about the black one, and I pray that they don't discontinue that one. Um, but I know that a lot of the colors and the brilliance. This is all kind of related um, with Stazon, because Stazon and Brilliant Sinks are Sukaneko, you know, the same company. Okay, so I'm adding a lot more of this down here because I thought, oh, let's add some of this to these little kind of overhanging limbs here. It's kind of weird because I'm going to be going over and, you know, um, blocking off a lot of this ink, uh, paint too here with the Dr. Martens. Let's see, uh, I don't use Stazon for coloring. I have used, hello Joyce. Uh, oh yeah, I can definitely see that, okay. Uh, the pad's drying out. So, see, I didn't know things like, um, someone told me um, when I made a comment about the um, stays on white pigment ink that you're supposed to, I don't know, they told me that you're supposed to re-ink that every time you use it. Because I was saying, hey, you know, um, that thing didn't, you know, it really stuck on me uh, when I made an impression because there wasn't enough ink on it. They just said, hey, you're supposed to re-ink it every time you use it. It's like, oh, okay, you know. Well, that being said, uh, I don't think, you're not supposed to re-ink it. Um, like if you use it, like in the same project, you know, from impression to impression, but I think they were talking about per day, right? But um, yeah, I didn't know things like that. So, I mean, when it comes to, like I, I just re-inked this today before I started this video. I thought, I'm oh, okay, I, I used it a couple of times. I better re-ink it, so um, yeah. I don't know, I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's designed to dry so fast, so. That would be the other side of it. It's going to dry up on our pads really fast, too. Like, when I'm using the Brilliant Sinks, too, I'm re-inking those all the time, which was kind of like, re, you know, ink pad culture shock for me because I might re-ink a, a dye base pad, like even black that I'm using all the time, like once every... If I'm using it heavily, like once a week, if that, you know? Um, I watched some other people demonstrating... Um, which I don't do too often, not because I'm trying to avoid it, but I just, I don't know. I was always just so busy, but, um, like in Stamp Wars, um, uh, by the way, everyone check that one out on the Nancy Stamps channel, if you haven't, um, those are all you know, like a crack up, but I was watching people stamp, and I was just amazed at just the uh, amount of, um, um, re-inking, um, they were doing, um, during their, um, demonstrations, I was thinking, wow, they really use a ton of ink, you know. Um, personally, when it comes to the dye-based inks, I like having kind of a more medium wet pad um, because I have a lot of detail in my stamps. Um, so, yeah, with things like Stazon, Brilliance, I'm learning, but 
yeah, that, you know, you really have to get a lot of that, um, get a lot of that, uh, you know, a nice infusion of, you know, fresh paint um, done uh, before you start working on your impressions. So I can definitely see it. Kay, you did uh, um, demonstrations, you were saying, so you're probably going through a lot of ink um, during that time. All right, so that was a lot of that, but okay, so that is being, that's going to look somewhat like that, okay, but we're going to bring in some additional tone or applications of that paint on the front side of this too, so um, that paint looks reasonably clear, but you know, boy, that's blue on there. I don't, God, I, don't, I might need, not need to block off with that. That acrylic paint is reasonably opaque, isn't it? Over the top of that, and that's... My paint is still wet, so I don't want to lay this down on here too much. Let me see, let me get a scrap piece of paper. This is black. Okay, I'm not going to do any blocking out. That's, that's um, opaque enough, which surprises me. And I'm not going to apply this over black either. So, I shouldn't need to. All right. Um... I don't know. Yeah. Uh, comments on uh, stays on or tips are uh, welcome here. <laughs> okay, 24 colors, Chris. So they're all in production, then I take it. I didn't... Yeah, that's why I didn't... I didn't like, like the idea of cleaning my stamps, um, too. Um, that's why I didn't use it, Joyce, but... Um, I found that it came right off the stamps that I've used it on so far pretty easily, okay. Um, uh, okay, but that's relatively speaking, because I, I, because I thought it was going to be really tough to, you know, come off uh, the stamp, where with dye base things, I just tap it into a wet paper towel, but with, a, with the drier ones like this one, I just kind of scrub it off a little bit. I haven't even clean this one off. I stamped this one, what was it, like one or two days ago. Okay, but anyways, there is that now. Oh, okay. I might have lied. I might have to block off some of this because I'm going to stamp this beaver dam like right back in here. Okay. So where it overlaps some of that color like that in there, I might need to block it off. Okay, I came up with a solution. I'm not going to block it off because if I do stamp this right over the back side of it right in here, um, and if it does show through, I'm just going to put some more um, ink applications right on the front side of that. So no worries, right? <laughs> okay, so let's do this. So when I do this right here, when I stamp this on the back side of this right here, you know, and then we flip it around, I don't know, is let, let me see. Yeah, that'll be a reverse impression then, right? Okay, so here we go. I just have to, one of the things with the stays on ink, so I'm going to have to remember what images I used with the stays on ink, again, before I put that, put that type of stuff away. Okay, so let's see. Uh... Stays on ink will work on plastic, aluminum, shrink plastic, glass, and vellum. Yeah. It works on just about everything. I think... Okay, so I used to know someone that... I don't know if they only worked on this, but they stamped a lot of the projects that they did. They stamped on, um, like, saw blades. So it would be like a, a metallic, like, disc one, or like a long, like, you know... I don't know. I don't know what kind of you know, saw you call that, but they did their things on saws. This is like 20 years ago. And um, yeah, it was all stays on for them. I don't remember what they, what they used to color. Oh, you know what they did? They, I think they just, they might have gessoed. They might have gessoed their blade, their metal before they stamped on it. So, okay, so they weren't going direct to metal. I think, because I, mem I remember distinctly there was colors on there. I don't think they colored directly 
like onto metal with some sort of medium like that. I don't think I have any photos up in the gallery. I might, there might be some photos in the gallery of um, their work. Saw blades though. It was really cool. All right, so let's go like this here. Okay, now I am stamping a little bit on, it's not too much of a ridge, but there'll be a little bit of one from that um, Dr. Martin's bleed proof in there. Okay, but look at this, you can stamp it right over that, but right in here, it, you know, it doesn't show through the Dr. Martin's Blade Proof White. Isn't that great? I'm gonna I'm gonna make a bigger dam here. I'm gonna carry that all the way across the uh, image. I'll try to merge it up reasonably well, but if it doesn't, I'm just gonna put some you know some of those leaves in front of it again. All right, so uh, let's go down like so. What I found here on the vellum too is, um, you know, like on paper, if you hold this down for too long on certain types of paper, it like adheres to it. It like formed a bond and I feel like I'm gonna tear the front of the uh, card off, but it seems like it's coming off the vellum really easily. All right. Okay, so there is that, all right. And yeah, let's get this out of here. Stone gray to use. Yeah. Uh, now, Chris, how is it that you haven't done grayscale before? I would have thought you would have done a lot of grayscale. I mean, I'm thinking back. I don't remember it offhand, but um, I don't know. You do all kinds of drawings and stuff like that. I would have thought you would have done grayscale at some point in time. Okay, so there is that, uh, and again, okay, I'm not going to zoom in here, but all nice and blocked out there. That that image in that stays on looks pretty decent in terms of um, the value of it. I mean, it, it probably dropped off, what would you say? That looks like a, I don't know, like a 90% gray or something like that, but when you're looking through the vellum at it, I don't know. It maybe dropped off 5% or something like that, maybe? I don't know. It's not too bad, though. I, I don't know. What I'm getting at here is I would have thought that would have looked more like a not, uh, like a, it would have dropped 10% in value or something like that. But you can see here the birch trees are stamped on the front of the vellum, and you can see that's quite a bit darker black, but that doesn't look too bad to me, so... I don't, that's one of the things about stays on too. I always want we want our black inks to be really nice and black as close to a hundred percent as possible. But um, I always I don't know. I, I just figured that like stays on being a solvent ink. Sometimes they're like ninety percent grays as opposed to kind of more of your 98 percent. You know, like really close to black. Like the blackest thing is the versifying clear as far as I'm concerned. But that's not too bad, especially looking through the back side of that um, uh, vellum. Okay, so uh, let's get some color laid down on there. I'm going to do the back side of it again, like this. Okay. Um, that stays on is a little bit. I think it's a little. No, I don't know. It might be dry. Is it? I think it's dry enough here. Where do you find shrink plastic? I don't know. You can probably just enter it in on Google, right? And find some. Wouldn't they have shrink plastic at, uh, you know, like your standard craft stores? It's interesting how shrink plastic kind of disappeared, I thought, for years and years and years. Um, I used to use it as a kid. It used to be called Shrinky Dink. 
and that became huge. God, we were doing shrinky dink all the time. Used to love it. I, I guess that's kind of like those applications, you know, everyone liked um, embossing, watching that turn, you know, as you're doing it, but watching that uh, that shrinky dink shrink in the, uh, we used a toaster oven for ours. Um, shrink in there was always really so fascinating. Okay, I'm being a little bit, I was probably being a little bit too particular when my application of this in here, but remember, it's going to be a lot lighter on here. Okay, now see, like the brown barely shows up, right? You know, but it's a, quite a bit darker on this side, like this, okay? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to lay down kind of this general brownish, well, brown tone over all of this. And I think what I'm going to do, because the colored pencil doesn't show up. Now, I'm not going like this, you know, that dark. I don't want to do that. But because that colored pencil, okay, I, the colored pencil is more surface oriented, so that makes sense. So I think what happened was with the, with the, um, the ink, right, it probably absorbed into the pores of the paper a little bit more, so that's why that's darker than the same type of, you know, application with the colored pencils. The colored pencil's not soaking in at all. It's all surface oriented, so that's why it's a little bit, it looks a little, uh, quite a bit darker on this back side than the front side, I'm guessing. I'm not a super experienced uh, vellum user. I've done it a few times last year, I think it was for the first time. And then, uh, you know, you explore it a little bit and kind of go back to it. Uh, yeah, you should try it. You should do grayscale, um, Chris, you know. Um, Chris, you should do grayscale in your, um, your watercolor work and all of that. Any, all of your different media applications, you should try it. I think, uh, and this is what I recommend. So Chris is talking about doing just a grayscale piece. Um, the grayscale pieces for me are really important exercises to do. I mean, I like it just for, you know, the l whole look of the scene as well. But um, for me, they're important exercises because it really gets... I think it fine tunes or tunes up or enhances our kind of sensitivity towards um, when you remove color, you're removing hue, intensity, and temperature out of the mix. Okay. Those are the three, you know, three of the properties of color. So what you're left with in terms of color are things like um, or you're left with value, okay, light and dark. So I feel that um, it's almost like losing part of your senses, okay, with that, but the other part gets heightened. So in terms of value, light and dark, you're, I don't know, you're kind of your sensibilities towards um, the lighting that you're creating in scenes, not only for the scene that you're doing, but going forward when you go back to color, it's just, it's just a little bit more heightened like that because you're only concentrating on that part, that one aspect of color. Okay, but then things like texturing and things like that maybe get more heightened too. You know, your sensibility towards texture and things like that when you're not, you know, don't have all these other things in there. Uh, again, temperature, intensity, and hue, you know, to think about. And then you can get very, very rich. I mean, it doesn't, it seems like, oh, okay, maybe it's limiting in terms of, you know, certainly color expression and temperature and things like that. But there is a lot of range that you can achieve from the use of grayscale, though. It can be a super rich, evocative palette um, that you're doing, too. So it's not like, oh my god, we're going to be missing so much. And then you can also do these grayscale things. And if you don't like it, you know, when you're done, just add color to it. You know, it's like color tinting or something like that. Okay, so I'm doing this on the front side. This is looking reasonably, um, I don't know, 
deep in terms of um, the uh, the colors, I think, at this point in time. I've barely done any color on here so far, and I haven't even used black. I'm going to add some shadows down in here. I'm still thinking of what to kind of add in the background in here. If I add some more kind of deciduous trees or this type of paintwork in the background, then what you do is you get this colored in here, you know, and as long as you're done coloring it from the back side, you know, I can still color it from the front side. You know, you take this and then you block this off with some of that um, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and then you can add in some other things in the background. Like, I'm almost inclined to, you know, just take a like a blue piece of paper back there. It wouldn't be like this color, but you can add in like a light blue back in here and just get this inherent, you know, color. Let me see something right here. I don't know if this is going to show through enough, but uh, let's see. You can take, I was mentioning, you can do things like um, different skies in the background like this. You know, so you have that cloud in the background. That actually looks pretty good, doesn't it? To have that cloud back there. I wouldn't have, you know, I mean, if I wanted to do some more trees and back in here, maybe I would do that. That cloud doesn't look too bad in there, though. You can almost have that cloud up here and in the water reflecting down here. But, yeah, um, photo things like this. And this is a five by, um, five and a half by eight and a half, but... All you do is you just, you know, fill in the surrounding area there. This, is, this photograph is only going to right here, but see this right here? So if you do, like, different photos in here, that looks like an even better use of it right there, where there's more contrast in here. Um, you can do something like that. But I don't know. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll use that photograph in here like that. Um, let's see here. Suppose Amazon, Michaels, etc. all have it. So the shrink, yeah, I, I thought uh, shrink plastic should be around. Yeah, Kay remembers Shrinky Dinks. That was in the 70s. Yeah, Chris, you should do, you should do grayscale. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Okay, so what I want there, I want some other imagery, I think, in the back of here. Um, I was thinking I want a little bit more water back there with another shoreline. But I don't know, I might keep it simple. I might put in some additional trees out there in the distance like that. Um... We can have it going like this, too, with trees like that. There could be this stream in here. I don't know. Huh. I suddenly, um, what happened here was I suddenly, I think I changed course. And uh, I'm thinking of different things after I saw what this looks like in here with that, um, with all that paint pen work. Uh, all right, so uh, we'll have some blues down in here. And I think that's going to be done. Here's the thing, too. Okay, so I can do it. I can stamp this imagery on this paper, too. Or you can do it on the back side of this. So that's what was a, a little bit... It's confusing in terms of the different op options that we have here. Okay? And there's a lot more of them um, with vellum. Okay? In terms of... Uh, just the sheer amount of layers that we have that we can choose to stamp on. Um, naturally, I think the background, you know, I don't think I'm going to do a background stamp on the front side of my vellum, so it'd probably be like on here or on here, okay? But uh, let's do... Huh. One of the things is, too, is you can stamp on... I could stamp stuff on here, and then if I don't like it, then I just flip it around and do something else, too, you know? I, I think I was joking around with someone at some point in time. I think it was using... 
it was either using vellum, and I was saying that you can give something to someone like this, and then you can give them like different things that they can slide into the background, you know, like different backgrounds. They can change it to night or something like that, you know. Um, speaking of that, I'm going to do some vellum Halloween things like I did last year. I kind of played around with that a little bit, you know, where you have something stamped down in white here and um, or in white on here. And then when you put in this black background, then suddenly, you know, the ghost, you know, dancing around appears or something like that, where you can't see it, you know, with that, uh, without that piece in there. Okay. Hello, Jason. Good to see you. Hello, Jen. All right. So uh, I'm kind of um, thinking about some different options here in which there's a lot in some ways I mean I want this to be kind of a um, a version of that other one that I did just so people can compare and contrast it but I think that looks pretty interesting up there and I think I'm gonna go for that I don't know I'm gonna go with my first instinct okay so that being said, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I take this outside to adhere down, I'm going to take some spray adhesive, or I can just use my roller right here, and this is going to go on here, and then you spray seal this, or the back side of this, and then you adhere it like that onto this piece, so that this one will be all um, supported up here. All right. And having that kind of support, you know, for a, you know, floppy, you know, thin piece of vellum is important, I think, in terms of a, you know, your overall card structuring here. So, all right, so let's see, where, let me see where this is going to go. I'm going to move this over a little bit more so I get a little bit more of that in there. Okay, so let's take it like this. All right. And let's take this. You don't need to be, you know, super careful about this because this right here is going to be totally um, adhered. It's going to be sandwiched in between another layer. So you see what this one is? This is that, you know, half page piece right here. Okay. And this is going on here. Now it's blocking, uh, I'm going to be blocking off the, uh, you know, anything that I'm going to be covering up on there. So it'll be like the uh, beaver dam right in there will need to be blocked off. And let's see. Oh, maybe I should have, uh, I made a mistake here. <laughs> I should have blocked off the, I should, I should have had this white down here. I should have cut off that part of the um, cloud there. So I can come back in and add another piece of paper over that, I guess. Let me see. Okay. Uh, here, let me do something here. I'm figuring this out on the fly here. Okay, so see that right there? I'm just going to run this piece of paper right across there. So I'm going to make a mark here. There's no way that I'm going to cut into this and then be able to lift that off. That thing is like permanently um, adhered down there. So that's going to be too tough to do that with. So, all right, so let's go with this here, like about like so. There might be an easier way that's occurring to all of you. And right now, what I'm doing right here is driving you nuts, but uh, I'm a slow learner. Okay, so let's see like this. Okay, so see this? If I come in like this, then I won't have to do so much blocking off of the dam either, okay? Uh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
if you even know what I'm, if you're following me at all uh, as far as what I'm doing, I'll show you what I'm doing here and what I'm talking about here. So this is a vellum, piece of vellum, and it's going to be getting adhered to this piece, which will represent my background. I planned on doing other types of stamped imagery on here, but I think this looks better, just kind of real simple like this, okay? So this is going to go like this. We do have these ends here, where that little piece is kind of showing in there, but I'm just going to fill that in with some additional foliage or something like that, or some additional color. Now I have my little water area down here, okay? I'm not putting the, the beaver lodge in this piece right here, okay? And then, um, I don't know, we'll have some additional stuff in here, a little bit of lighting down here. Let's do that right now. So let me figure out where this is going to go here. Okay, this is like my water area, like that. Okay, and it'll go out to about like that. The water is right in here, okay. So, let's see here. All right, so I'm going to be doing this on, I don't know, probably on multiple levels. And I, now here I just did another thing. This is a total blooper. This should be a blooper reel. But I just laid down like copy paper here. So I'm going to be adding my color applications on like the cheapest paper possible. But again, it's not going to matter too much because we're covering up with this, you know, translucent vellum. So you're not going to be able to see it too much anyway. Okay. So let's take, um, a piece of paper towel, like about like so. I'm not going to fool around with going through like super light, um, versions of colors right now, because again, it's just going to get kind of blotted out here and, um, you're not going to be able to see it that much. Okay, I do want some lighting in here, okay? And hello, Debbie Reeves. I am back again. I joined on a little bit earlier for everyone in, uh, you know, other time zones and whatnot. I thought I'd jump on a little bit earlier today. Oh, I can see my, um, my tape <laughs> in there a little bit. My tip, tape textures are showing through. Or the... The glue, the glue runner, crapper's tape. Okay, so this is what I'm doing here. Okay. So that's going to represent my water area. Let's see what it looks like here. Okay, looks a little bit like that. All right. It's not matching the sky. Let's turn, let's tone it down a little bit. Okay, so. Let's go with some of that, and let's go with um, let's go with the Danube blue and the Bahama blue. Okay. It's August, folks. Already, I thought. July is a little bit early for doing um, like Halloween cards or something like that. The beginning of August, it's a little bit early too, but for demonstration purposes, I don't think it's too early to do um, some Halloween types of uh, um, scenes. Now see, I don't know if Chris is still on, but Chris, you know, like, um, like a Halloween scene, uh, as far as like scenic stamping, not, you know, like all Halloween types of cards, but you know, when it comes to scenic types of imagery, um, grayscale is works really well for that. I love I love doing grayscale Halloween types of scenes, and then adding a little tint of, you know, um, distressing antique linen or something like that, just to kind of warm up the grays. Or at going the opposite way and going a little bit cool in those grays. But look at my tape right here, showing right through like that. Hey, you can make a nice little kind of. Uh, um, technique out of that, you know, by having some tape in the back of paper. <laughs> if you want to go for some kind of little 
um, geometric type of element. Okay, so always kind of get your bearings when you're doing some sort of application like this, you know, hold it up. See how that's going to be looking like that, all right? All right, so let's take a little bit darker. Let's go on with the Bahama blue. We're getting a little bit closer to that color right there. So I wanna have some of that color matching, you know, and reflecting that color coming from the sky, okay? All right, so that didn't look like that. I can tell that that is getting there. So in other words, you know, you want a little bit of range and that base of the um, uh, beaver dam is going to be right there too. So I might make this a little bit darker like that. Okay. But again, you know, we, you know, we have the front side of this to do too, you know, in order to, you know, if you want to fine tune it with colored pencils or anything like that. Vellum is fantastic for colored pencils, by the way. I love using colored pencils with vellum. And I just don't have that opportunity a lot of times, you know, if I'm using, you know, I use a lot of um, glossy cardstock, you know, and that's just like, that. that's like the worst, you know, surface that you can use with color, you know, for colored pencils, I guess, like foils would be even worse, but um, I love using those and I love the look of them and Vellum's my opportunity, oftentimes, because I don't do a lot of matte papers. I do like the semi-glosses, though, which are a little bit closer to the matte, but I love, I, li I really like the impression quality on at least semi-coated papers um, for the details, you know, that a lot of my stamps have. All right, so there is that. That looks totally weird, you know, that this is going to be a part of a scene, but... When it comes to vellum, like that. Look at now, look at that glow down there, right in that water. And then, of course, this is really floating in here, so you can we'll add in some additional tone um, with the use of uh, colored pencils on there. Okay. All right. So we have this little area out here. Let's just make this. Let's give this a little bit of a head start here too, in matching with that in here. Again, I'm not trying to totally match this up. It doesn't have to be perfect but it'll just get a little bit of uh, some additional tone in there that'll give us a head start to blending that in, okay? All right, let's see. Hey, let's go with a little bit of grayscale. Okay, I'm not using my stays on for this purpose, you know. I don't do any type of, like, blending that. I don't think I dare, although I should try it, though, because every time I try something, it's like, oh, that worked differently, or it worked where I didn't think it would work, or something like that happens. When I posted one of my um, scenes using vellum um, on some board, um, someone put in the quote, like they said, oh, I didn't think you can use um, alcohol inks or something like that with um, vellum. And again, maybe you can't with certain brands, but um, um, like I said, I don't know. I didn't have any problem with it. Okay, let's go for a little bit of a vignette here in the corners, okay? If you just logged on and you're watching me do this background thing, you're probably thinking, what the heck is that? Right there. All right. Christmas in July, Chris, yeah. I mentioned that, uh, I think that's what they used to do. I think there used to be workshops called Christmas in July at a lot of the stores. Okay, so see that right there? So see, I have that little white in there, but that, you know, that extra blue in there. And I added that little vignette type of thing that I like to do on my pieces. And you can just do it in your background like this, okay? 
let's go a little bit more. It looks like it could it could take it really nicely like this, okay? One of the good things about this too is you don't have to be, again, because we're seeing through that vellum like that, you can, I don't know, you don't have to be real careful at all. Normally I like my applications to be nice and smooth and you know, I mean, if you're able to get a nice smooth application of tone on your piece, maybe kind of ex exercise that, but you don't have to uh, do it on in this type of uh, scenario here. That vellum, <laughs> that vellum is, it's shockingly um, I don't know, forgiving, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of this process. Just because the sheer amount, there's like, okay, so you can do certain things if you're working on just a flat piece of paper and cardstock and doing like a whole card on that scene, you know, in this case. But with vellum, it's like you have uh, like three layers in which to, um, you know, do something, make up for something, cover something up or whatever. I mean, this is a prime example. I just kind of just did a different layer in here, you know, because I, you know, covered this place, you know, thing up in the background. Okay, but see this right here? It's looking a little bit more, you know, contained now with these four corners toned in like that, okay? Um, and you can do all kinds of things. I mean, it could have been a warm tone kind of, you know, um, scene or something like that. Now, like I said, this area in here, I'm just going to fill in with some additional textures. I want some of those um, leaves in the front of my branches anyway, so that's going to fill in that area. This area right in here is totally floating, but you can do, I can come in with shading on the back here, or I can do it on the front if I forget to, or you can shade in. Let's get Let's get some of the shading right in the um, area down here. I think I could do it much faster. Just let's just use this right here. Okay. Let's take some black here. Okay, and let's just add this down like this. It's probably not going to be dark enough, but it can give us a little bit of a head start for um, some shading work to come. Okay. Let's take the, some of this right in here. Let's make this whole area in here a little bit darker. In the background like that. Okay, this is on the back side of the uh, scene, back side of the vellum, but you know, if you, if you don't know. All right, so this is the front side of it, but see it has that little shade down there, that little shadow like that, but see that right there? It's already kind of, you know, acting as a little bit of an anchor, visual anchor for that dam, like that. All right. Um, let's see. Welcome back, PJB Stamper. All right, let's see here. Let's go in and I think I should I think I should adhere these now. Um, let's see, should I go in and do it? I'm gonna add in a little bit more pen work. I love all this kind of this. Um, foliage, you know, those little saplings coming up um, in this situ forested situation here. over there. I was going to add someone over here, but I forgot and I added it right there. <laughs> Forgetting it was flipped. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, I think what I'm going to do here now... Oh, okay. I forgot about this too. Um, we're going to go in and block off some of that top portion of that... Um, Damn, so let's see how much that is going to be covering or going into that. 
that photograph. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I need to block that off. It's all white up there anyway. See like that. See that that harsh line of that white and going up in that cloud. You can't even see it. So I don't think I need to do anything there. Oh, let's do something right here. Let's let's put some of these leaves right behind this one. Okay. So let me see. This is the tree right here. So. This is the tree right here, and it's on this side, I think, that line, partial that part of that line is. Let's break some of that line up a little bit. I'm talking about that, um, that, um, line that's created right there. So let's see. Okay, so that covered, uh, that's going to cover up. Did I hit the wrong side of the tree? I hit the wrong side of the tree. There's just too many back. There's too many back and front uh, considerations with this, uh, which for the purpose of this is a good thing. But um, you just have to kind of look at it. So I got some paint there, but who cares? Okay, and that one is right there. So it is right there. So let's come into it like this. Right, so that'll be that. Okay, so that broke it up a little bit, right? Okay, so I'm going to take, okay, here's here's my thing too. Um, I'm trying to think if, let me see something here, what? Oh, I do need to block off some of that because look at all that blue from underneath that part is showing through the bottom of the dam like that, okay? Not that it looks terribly bad, but maybe it's a little bit too much. All right, so we do need to block some of that off. Uh, you guys didn't tell me. <laughs> if there's anything I'm doing, you know, it's like, hey, Kevin, you know, d but forget, about, you know, because I was like concentrating on that top part, but I forgot about this bottom part. So, okay, so if you just logged on, you don't know what I'm doing right here. Um, I am using the opaque water color white bleed proof white by Dr. Martens, okay? All right, so this is the back side and I think that's all that I'll do. I'll I'll do my additional coloring on the front of it, which I could have done, you know, at the beginning anyway, but we're just going to cross here like so and I'm going to be blocking off certain areas down here. Um the uh, colored pencil in there, again, is resisting some of that, but the areas that I didn't go with with the colored pencil anyways, those are the areas that I really want to protect, right? Because that blue is going to be showing through on the white portion of it that I didn't color with the colored pencil. So if you get some of this kind of um, wax resist areas, then those aren't the areas that you really need to worry about covering up anyway. So. You can just go right in there like that. Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White is a very, very quick drying medium too. So you can just go right in there like that. And it should be dry in like a couple minutes, okay? If not, I don't know, seconds. All right, so very good stuff and one jar really lasts a really long time even though it's a very small jar okay all right so that is that let's get my bearings again and see that dam in there i don't have all that blue tinge of right in here showing through there anymore okay all right now here's the thing i'm always kind of i'm not certain about whether i should spray um, apply the spray adhesive to the vellum or if I should apply it to this part. I'm guessing this part because it's stiffer maybe and it's easier to handle. Then when I lay this down, it'll be nice and dry and then I can adhere it to that, I guess, right? I mean, I guess you can do it either way, but oftentimes when I do this, especially on this size of piece, a lot of times I get bubbles in, in there so this is so thin. Okay, so I think I just talked myself into it. I'll spray seal. I'll apply the uh, spray adhesive on this one right here. Yeah, uh, PJB, I'm going to attach the vellum to the cardstock. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and it will show through, Tim. It'll be texturized, okay, a little bit. I mean, if I'm real careful, it doesn't show through, um, but I'm not. <laughs> so one of the things I tell people is when you go into it, expect a little bit. And the cans that I'm using are 15 years old, the 3Ms. When they're newer and they're, um, they have more um, of that, um, I don't know, they're, they're more compressed. It goes on smoother. Like when I use this one, I think the can even looks different these days. But when I do this, it gets a little blobby on here in certain areas. And then that kind of shows through a touch, okay? Let me say, can you, you, you can, a little, you can a little colored pencil in alone the side of the picture to hide the edge. Uh, yeah, I can. That's true, Jason. Um, Jason and PJB voted for that, but I'm just, my vote is to just cover the whole thing up with additional leaves in the foreground. Okay. Um, always to the paper. No little beaver. Well, the beaver can go on the front side, Candy. Can it? You know, like that. That dam would be too big for that really tiny beaver, though. I'd use the much bigger one. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, I am going to go outside. Everyone, go take your bathroom break. Go get a drink. You know, go get your uh, go get your glass of wine here. And I will be back in about, I don't know, this will, it won't take too long. It'll, I'll be back in like, I don't know, like a two and a half minutes or something like that. Okay? All right. Okay, I am back, and I'm reminded why I don't like using spray sealant, because it gets like, I feel it like on my hairs and my arm and everything like that. And let's see, that is the front side of it, right? Sometimes, you know, I'm so used to spray sealing, acrylic sealing pieces that uh, not using the adhesive, so it seems weird when you're spray sealing right over the front of something. Okay, I just missed it there. I'm off a little bit, but just get it the best you can. You can't really keep doing it over and over. But see that like that? It doesn't look too bad. I used a little bit more spray sealant than I normally do. I thought maybe that would work better if I kind of hit it with a little bit extra. You know, to kind of get an even, a more even coating maybe, okay? And, uh, and remember, when you use uh, like that Dr. Martens in there, the more paint you use on your vellum, the more kind of it kind of puckers and warps a little bit, you know. Um, and you might get bubbles and ridges. I've gotten bubbles and ridges in my pieces all the time, okay. I go into it just expecting that. Now, I didn't get it here, and I didn't get a bunch of bubbles and ripples in it, but you just kind of work it out the best you can. 
and then sometimes you get it out, but then when it dries, it comes back. It's like, oh my God, that ridge is there. Okay, so I have one um, video where I've just incorporated the ridges into the thing, adding shadows around them. And I just, you know, like sometimes like where you add the bleed proof white to um, in the back of things, it's like, oh, there's a little bit of a ridge, you know, I don't know why it's like maybe the paper, the vellum puckered and it feels like this dimensional, in this case, it would be a trunk sticking out and just to say, Hey, you know, you just, that's all part of the, the thing, you know, end result or whatnot. Okay. All right. But anyways, yeah, but I don't know that, that one, that one came out. Okay. Some, like I said, sometimes they don't, you know, but just kind of go with it or kind of, you know, expect that going into it. And I think you'll be reasonably, you know, happy with the uh, kind of end result. Okay. And I, I could have blocked <laughs> some of that. I have some of that blue coming down on this grass. I'm just going to make that a little bit darker in there then. Okay. With my colored pencils and I'm trying to think the acrylic paint pens really work on a lot of different surfaces. So I think I can go right over the top of the, the wax, maybe not ideally, you know, but why not? Did everyone go and take your break? Have your, have your nice cold beverage. Is it cold anywhere and where anyone is, or is it all hot these days? In other parts of the world. Okay, so I'm adding in this darker green and I'm adding it in the shadow areas down in here, okay? I was going to do one of those things where you have a like a wet towel around your neck, but I couldn't find my uh, the one that I use, usually use for that. And I wanted to jump on so I didn't grab that. But I'm sitting here, I have like these big, huge lamps on both sides of my face. So if I'm, when I'm doing these scenes, if I look um, all kind of sweaty, I apologize. I have this glaze, like sheen of like heat, you know, in this, uh, in my little studio here. And even though they're fluorescent bulbs, there's like, um, 10 of them. <laughs> I need to switch out to LEDs. Uh, okay, so anyways, adding that down. So I'm anchoring these down a little bit more with shade, right? And that's just using green. Okay, but it doesn't look here. And remember, I added that tone in the background there. Okay, so um, let's go on with uh, maybe a darker one. I'm just working through this kind of this range of values again. Okay, so let's go to the darker one like this. And I want my lighting coming from the interior here. If you want to, you can kind of make kind of shadows coming out from that a little bit. In this type of lighting here, I don't think there would be hard shadows like, you know, like a sun on the horizon or something like that. You can make things a little bit more interesting though, having um, some shadows kind of being cast, you know, from you know, kind of a little bit more of a specific lighting than just some general lighting overall. You know, shadows are really fun to apply. So these ones over here, I kind of have aiming like this way. And these ones over here, you can kind of go in this direction. You don't have to have, you know, bring out a ruler or anything like that. You know, but I'll just kind of add it down here like so. Okay, now here's the thing too. I'd like to have like other things in my foreground right here. And I'm using the colored pencils in here, but normally I'd do the foreground first because like, there's just no way that um, dye-based inks are going to stick to that foreground. I'm hoping that the stays on ink, I can stamp it down over the top of this wax colored pencil and it'll stick. Does anyone know if that'll work? I know it stays on seems to stick to everything else. Does it stick to wax though? Um, yeah. Uh, let's see, did someone ask about something? Uh, oh, a train trestle. Yeah. I know there's been train trestles in the past. Um, I was telling um, Froggy Fresh that it was, it's too bad that um, she's looking for trains and she knows, you know, trains. So I was thinking it's too bad that Gumbo Graphics isn't around because they used to have an entire train line 
um, featuring a lot of, you know, very detailed old engravings, you know, um, featuring very specific types of trains, you know, uh, you know, period accurate, you know. There were, there were a couple of, like, you know, companies like that with, you know, those types of images. Like Imagineer had very specific um, aircraft, historical, modern, everything. You know, starting from, you know, like the Kitty Hawk or something like that to, you know, I don't know, whatever, SR-71s. I don't know if they had F F-16s or something like that, but... All right, so just going in here into the shadow areas and kind of reiterating some shadow areas down in my grass like that. I haven't forgotten about the beaver dam, so we'll you know we'll be doing more of that with the, uh, the browns up here and whatnot. Um, I wish we would get some of that monsoonal types of weather, not in the extremes like some areas of the country, of course, but, you know, where they're having, like, massive floods, but, um, I don't know. Southern California, we don't get those monsoonal types of rains, you know, except out in the deserts and kind of upper elevations sometime, but at some point in time, I don't know, fairly recent in the last couple of years, we did get some rain one night. It was really weird, unless it was, the, I don't know, unless it was, like, Maybe it was out here like a month ago or something like that. It rained one night. All right, so going in here and kind of rendering that, um, the shadows in here a little bit more. I'm just surprised at the, um, the degree of value that that, um, beaver dam has back there on the other side of the vellum. I'm pretty pleased with the uh, that stays on. And pretty, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, pleasantly surprised at how dark that is back there. All right, let's see. There's a little bit of a warmer brown, lighter brown, tan-ish. Speaking of all this heat, you know, as I'm doing this, it's like I always mention to people that one of the fun things about doing um, scenes, I mean, we all kind of get lost in our work, you know, whatever type of creative work we're doing, you know, we lose track of the time and stuff like that. But I was telling people before that I think one of the things with scenic stamping too, when you start doing something like this, there's almost a transportive type of element to it where you can go you know, I don't know if people are transporting into their, like, like a birthday card or something like that with balloons and stuff like that, maybe, you know, I think they're getting lost, you know, they're losing themselves in the creativity, but when you do something like this, almost from a subconscious, you know, aspect, you're kind of going into the scene itself. So when someone is saying that um, it's been almost like too hot to craft, you know, <laughs> I kind of joke, because I know them. I was jokingly saying, well, just stamp out a, you know, really cold scene, you know, do something, you know, in the Arctic, stamp something like an Arctic scene or something like that. And if that's true, that there's some sort of a kind of a, you know, subconscious transportive aspect to it, then, you know, maybe they'll have to put on a jacket while they do their scene. <laughs> All right, so anchoring down these, this is black that I'm using now, okay? So remember we used a little bit of black underneath this on this white piece of paper here, 
and that did it. But now you can do it. I mean, I could have done it on the back side of the vellum too, or you can do it on, you know, either whatever, all three surfaces if you want to. But yeah, let's see here. It, uh, why did you choose stays on versus ver I Tammy would Okay, does anyone know this answer? Has anyone tried like a Versafine Claire on um vellum before? And if you have, would it dry? Or just from what you know about Versafine Claire and vellum, do you think in theory it would dry? I don't think it would dry. Um, the Versafine Claire is a, a, a or, or have you, Tammy, have you used Versafine Claire on, um, on vellum before? Vellum's, vellum is reasonably, it has a little bit of, you know, it is a little bit porous, right? But that oil-based pigment ink, I just, I don't know, I don't think it would dry on here. So that's why I didn't use it. I mean, I could be wrong, and it could be, you know, it, maybe it dries on certain vellums and not on others. I don't know. But does anyone know or have any thoughts on that? Because I would like to know that, too. If the, you know, if the Versavine Claire works, if the Versavine Claire dried on e everything, glossy cardstock, um, like this vellum, uh, what else? Foils? I would just use the Versafine Claire on everything. But I find that um, oil-based inks like that that somewhat require a absorption um, type of factor to be able to happen, um, I don't find that it dries on things. So it's like photo papers. One time I used the Versafine Claire and I thought it would dry on there and it didn't dry um like even after like two months <laughs> it wouldn't dry at all okay in fact it was weird because the impressions looked great at first but then it's i went back to it i looked at it after like two weeks and all the images kind of ran um on the surface Okay, so adding in some additional shadow work onto these pieces. Did anyone mention anything about the uh, um, the stays on over the wax? Um, no one said anything. Uh, okay, we're, well, we're going to try it here then. If someone said it absolutely is not going to stick, then maybe I wouldn't. Okay, so there, there's some shadow work in there. I think it's all sitting into the sand. I don't want to go too dark with that because, again, this is more like a, I don't know, whatever it is, 90% gray, 85, 90% gray. Okay, so I don't want to go like 100% shadow work in there, which wouldn't make a visual sense in there. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's go back with our pens. I don't know why I put them away here. always mix up you know because these things separate very fast that's what keeps them from clogging on us okay it'd be interesting to do this in some paint and then hit it with some clear embossing powder and then emboss it I just don't dare emboss the vellum with that spray adhesive and then um, the photo print in the background, I, th I think it would mess it all up. It would totally delaminate the um, the vellum from um, that adhesive going in there, okay? But I think it would be kind of neat because it would make this extra dimensional with some of these front applied leaves. Because remember, these leaves are all on. It's, it's hard to believe it, but these leaves are all on the back side of the vellum right now. So I I'm surprised at how bright they look. Again, I don't know. It's maybe maybe because I haven't just done, I haven't done this in a 
you know, a few months or something like that. Okay. But see, this is where I'm going in. I'm going over the front of some of these, you know, um, trunks now to bring some of the leaves from the back to the front. Okay. It makes some of them a little bit, hopefully it makes some of them a little bit lighter. Like that. Okay. I think it makes the trunks look a little bit more dimensional. Kind of breaking up the forms a little bit. Okay, Froggy Fresh only uses Versafine for embossing. Okay, I find that the Versafine Clear, I use it for my foreground imagery too. Like if this was on um, the semi-gloss paper and I'd do it in my foreground. Again, because in my foreground and then I would be done with it. I would just let it set and let it dry. Um, where I don't need to uh, do anything additional to the scene. So I use it for that, and I love it for that too, um, the look of that. Um, but yeah, definitely with the embossing too. But I don't know, as far as like foreground values, okay, um, if you want something really dark, um, if there's a better ink, I don't know about it. I mean, I used to use Versafine, okay? But then, I don't know, because someone told me about Versafine Claire, I assumed it was the same thing. But the Versafine Claire seems to be a little bit better, and the pad is um, superior, um, just in terms of the construction of it. You know, this one right here, the pad is better. On this one right here, it's just denser. The only reason I bought it, I usually don't get it, but I was ordering a bunch of the Brilliance pads and I thought, okay, I, you know, so many people have mentioned the, the Claire, I thought, okay, I, I'm just gonna add that into the uh, card. And plus I think I needed to add in, I don't know, I had to get it up to a certain amount to get free shipping or something like that. And I think that's why I bought the white one too. Um, the uh, stays on white. Okay, like I said, I didn't match up my um, vellum um, perfectly with this. So I am just, I can, you know, you should really just trim off to make this like really nice and square, but I'm just kind of adding some additional foliage up in there, up in that area. All right, so let's go with some of the green too, because I want that kind of multi-tone going on. This is like a stage for some kind of thing right in here. So I'm going to stamp something in here. I'm not sure what, though. Maybe for Halloween, a dancing skeleton. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. All right, so that is that. Let's see. 
call it something like that. All right, where did that stays on go? Okay, so the stays on, let's see if I can find, I want that leaves, yeah, this one right here, and I need my smaller acrylic block, here we go, here. Everyone know about um, tack and peel? Tack and peel is this thing that you stick to your acrylic blocks that allows you to use your um, rubber dies uh, for a temporary uh, mount for your rubber dies. I get, I get those questions all the time after these videos. Uh, people are too shy to, you know, some people, you know, they don't want to put a note up in the... Uh, up in the uh, the um, the message boards I hear, but they'll message me later on. Okay, so let's see. I, I don't know if I missed any questions here. Let's see. Uh, Froggy Fresh, their Gumbo Graphics, their train line. They did have a couple in the Gumbo Graphics line, but there was a completely separate train company by Gumbo Graphics, so it wouldn't be under the Gumbo Graphics name. Um, let's see. Claire, boom. <laughs> Great on Matt. Claire is the same ink, just different colors, they say. Someone said it was a re more refined ink, I thought, Candy. Um, it's definitely a more refined pad. I find than the kind of that old felt, you know, that that's on all the Versafines. If they even have the other Versafine, I don't know why they would have that entire Versafine line anymore. Now that the Versafine Claire is out there and they're just better. Um, let's see, Versafine Claire on vellum, hit it with the heat gun and it is not smearing. Okay, that's a good thing to know. Uh, where do you get tack and peel K is, I don't know, it's on Amazon, um, um, Michael's online might have it, and it would probably be on Imagine Crafts, which is the, um, distributor for, um, anything Sukaneko, okay, in, in the U.S., if, you know, if you're here in the U.S., so. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's add in. Okay, I'm going to try the stays on over this wax. I, I, I hope it works. Wax in terms of the colored pencils, so. Let's see. I think it would work. I don't know, though. You know, who knows? Eh, it seemed to work. It's not... Um, it's not 100% black, though. It's a little bit lighter, okay? So it's, it looks like it's more of like a 90%. It's probably the same value as the... Um, beaver dam in the back i don't know maybe, maybe yeah okay so see it's not quite as dark as i as i you know like i I'd prefer like like a versafine claire would look if you know a versafine claire you're not gonna be able to stamp it on top of wax i really don't think like a thick layer of colored pencil and have it stick okay so that's why i'm not using that i just can't imagine oil over wax drying but um yeah i, I don't know tammy's gonna try it for us here <laughs> i'm joking tammy you don't have to do that um oh uh, going back to the tack and peel tack and peel like a good price for that is like you know 
10 bucks or less, don't buy it if it's like 15, 20, okay? Okay, so with it, with this, I'm holding it down a little bit longer too, just because it is going on top of wax. Normally, you would never hold down the uh, the stays on that long. Okay, it's just this is just lifting off just fine for me on here. And again, because it's going on to wax, so I'm just holding it down a little bit longer, thinking maybe it you know that transfer will happen a little bit more. Yeah, look, you know, something like that. So I'm just I'm, I'm want to frame off the scene a little bit more or a lot more, okay, with imagery down here at the base. And when I do that too, um, it kind of obscures a little bit of the um, the angles, the hard angles from tree trunks and things like that, where it meets the surface. I don't like these kind of 90 degree angles that are co created by um, trees, tree trunks and stuff like that down there. So I'd like to soften it up with some additional imagery like that. And plus the additional imagery just gives this whole scene, some extra um, depth and space. Um, contrast. Okay, so like that. It is looking... I think, you know, for me, I do think that... Um, these vellum pieces can look especially deep, you know, from an illusion depth, you know, standpoint. Um, let me see here. I want to stamp something right in here, and I'm thinking about a deer or something like this, but I'm feeling right here um, where that ridge is in the background where I laid down that piece of paper because I don't want to stamp over this big ridge there, you know it come out kind of weird but let me see I don't know I'd have to have a really big deer like this in relation to that I don't want that to look like you know going back in perspective like it's uh you know this dam's like two stories <laughs> you know maybe two stories to a beaver but I don't want it to look like 20 feet high in relation to, uh, you know, something I stamped down there. Or I can just put some birds up in the sky like that. That would be kind of the visual anchor, too, um, within the scene. Um, someone mentioned the beaver, you know. I, you know, I have that little beaver. The bigger beaver would just be too big, I think, in this one. Uh, let's see. I'm going to add in a little bit of this too. I like what's happening down here with these darker images. And I just kind of want to break apart some of these forms a little bit with a little bit of a, oh, I don't know. There's already these branches in here, but I just want something closer to us to create a little bit of extra depth. So let's do this here. Okay, I was being a little bit judicious early on with my usage of stays on it because I don't want to have to remember to clean off like 10 different images. But anyway, it's working out just fine on here. It's stamping over everything. So let's use the stays on. Anything for the, uh, anything for the scene, right? this again I have to kind of you know think about those little ridges in here you know where the, you know that photograph ended and the other one begins I don't think you know I don't think I'll get a weird impression though all right so there's that one coming in from up top there like about like so and let's have another one over here Oh, I forgot completely, too. We'll do some other things on here to make it look even more um, uh, three-dimensional. I, I didn't. Even, I forgot all about my white paint pen on those trunks in there. Oh, that one looks good. Let me do another one. 
down here, like that, like so. Okay. Yeah, maybe if I put enough detail on there, I won't need to, you know, have some kind of like strong focal point. I do think some birds up there would be good though. Okay, so, oh my gosh, all these pads. Okay, so white paint pen work. I need a little beaver on the shore, like where it's gnawing some uh, thing. Uh, hello, Jeannie. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Or the guy in the ranger hat with his hands on his hips. He would be about like this big, though. He'd be looking up at like, you know, the uh, granddaddy of all beaver dams, because I think that would be like a, if I had that guy down here, he'd have to be like this big, you know, or something like that. I don't have a standing beaver now. It could be like a, I don't know, there was a movie in the uh, 70s called Foods of the Gods, where it, uh, these animals ate all this, uh, I don't know, chemically enhanced uh, I don't know, runoff water, and they all got gigantic and started eating people. <laughs> I don't know if there was like a gigantic chicken or something like that. There was all there was a, definitely a gigantic rat going after someone though. Hello, uh, Linda. Good to see you. The prairie dog. Now here, that I was thinking about that, Debbie. I was thinking the prairie dog because someone wanted to see that anyway, but. I'm not going to stamp him in there at this point in time, too, because, you know, I don't know, it'd be somewhere in there. Or a little squirrel or something like that would be interesting, hopping around on this tree. Okay, so I shaded the right side of these trees because I wanted the light coming from on the interior here. So you take this and you illuminate the left side of it like this, okay? I don't do a full line, I just kind of break up the line a little bit like this. It's kind of going along the line, you know, uh, w along with the spirit of what I call that lineless coloring or something like that. Um, where you're kind of getting rid of some of that line. You do, want, you do want some of that reference line in there, unless you have, you know, such a super high contrast against something that it's against, you know, like the background in this case. But I find it better to just kind of, you know, to have it a little bit more scribbly and kind of rendered in like that, okay? And then you can come in here and you can add in some of those little textures, you know, that are on the birch tree itself and just kind of go in there with that too. But just kind of leave it loose, you know, leave your application or keep your application of it a little bit loose. But you see that little, you know, it's a little bit lighter. You can illuminate some areas of the trunk like that. You know, it's not supposed to be like this, like paper towel kind of, you know, cylinder smooth or anything like that. You want it to kind of, you know, these things to be a little bit textural, so it would stand to reason that their lighting would be different on it. What that does for us is it takes out the need for, you know, complete, you know, um, uniformity of ink application, shadow application, and all that. Just keep it nice and loose and scribbly. I've had to learn that myself in some ways, and especially I get inspired by seeing it done looser than you know, what I do even still. So as I'm mentioning that, I'm kind of mentioning it to myself as well here, okay? All right, so these trees right here, see this one right here? See the difference between this side and this side? I mean, I just feel that the lighting is stronger on that side in terms of the illusion of it because we've gotten rid of that one side or partial, okay? So on these ones right here, I'll get rid of the, um, a lot of the right side um, structuring of that. So you just kind of, I mean, you don't have to get rid of the whole thing, but you can get rid of some of it like this, okay? Okay. 
You notice I'm flipping my card around, you know, because it's easier for me to access this from this side. If I'm doing it over here, I've got my hand down on the, you know, right on the scene, so, you know, just flip everything around in a direction that, where the application of whatever you're doing is going to be the most conducive and uh, comfortable to do, okay? You know, if you're using a, a positioner or something like that, and that's not going to be, you know, you know, you don't feel like moving around that whole thing, then do this type of work after you've done all your impressions stuff, just pull it off and, you know, do this type of work on there. All right, so maybe on tops of some of these um, elements in the dam, just giving them a little bit more of the illusion of light hitting in some areas. It is giving me, you know, kind of that really bright lighting on some of these areas here. Maybe I don't want to do too much because it would stand out too much. Okay. I like that lighting in there, though. I think I'm going to add in some, a little bit more lighting with this white extra fine onto some of these leaves, okay? All right, I haven't had trouble focusing, this camera focusing so far today, so let's see how far I can come in here. Still focused, right? Okay, there. I think I saw it hunt a little bit briefly there, so let's just stop right there. You can see I'm just coming into this, and if there's highlighting of that, you know, that light on there, and then let's hit some of this kind of this bright light. I mean, it's not going to stand out as much because it's white over yellow. But you know, you put a couple of those little elements in there like that, and you know, it'll create a little bit more visual harmony with you know the other lightest areas of your scene. Okay, I think that's really working in there. That looks like it's it's helped it a lot, huh? Actually. Now, um, with these vellum pieces, I don't think I would ever do an eight and a half by 11 vellum if I had to um, adhere a full eight and a half by 11 vellum piece. Maybe you can do the, like, the vellum in certain areas, you know, where you can get extra layering or, I don't know. I don't know how that would work out, but like the bigger the piece of vellum, it just seems like spray, that spray adhesive and trying to get that thing laid down on there really nicely. Um, unless, I don't know, unless you're doing it all the time, I think it'd be a little bit precarious. So for me, uh, this half page scene is probably, I don't know, it's, that's the largest I'd really want to do. Um, in this technique. Which I'm not saying that's what you should do, though, you know. I don't know, try it out, you know, or whatever. If you get doing them and it's like no problem at all, kind of getting them uh, adhered together, um, you know, why not? Why not try? If any of you ever do, you know, <laughs> something, you know, full page scenes to begin with. All right, so anyways, there's the white in there, so... We get a little bit more dimensional. Let's see. I'm kind of curious to see what this would look like, or this will look like. Kind of mat it off a little bit. So this will be, you know, I'll hit it with a little bit of a, a border on here. Let's see. Like something like this. I like that. All right, let's see. Uh, 
Let's see, someone liked the birds there. Birds, mo worst movie ever. In terms of quality or fear. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Food of the Gods. <laughs> it was a pretty... It was pretty scary, though, if you watched it. Uh, I don't know, I was a little kid at the time. Uh, I was. It really scared me. Uh, let's see. Chris, you so Chris, you actually saw Food of the Gods. That was one of those movies that came out after like the Jaws and more of the natural ones. Then they went kind of more supernatural with that. They thought, okay, we did Piranha, we did, you know, uh, what was it, the Orca one, the Killer Orcas, you know, um, the Deep was it? I don't remember. Chris, it was a giant rooster. Yeah. Okay. Food. <laughs> So you can come at, uh, on the uh, internet and you can throw out this like super, super obscure movie and someone will have seen it right there. Uh, art house movie? Oh, I thought it was pretty widespread. Huh. It's probably like on YouTube these days. It was like a total low budget thing. The Birds. I like Birds. I didn't see The Birds until, uh, I don't know, it was like in college or something. They didn't, I don't think it ever replayed, you know, on those uh, uh, rerun things pre, you know. Um, let's see. No villain involved in this one, so you had to mask. <laughs> I don't like masking all that, Linda. But this is vellum right here. It, it adhered really well. It doesn't look like the vellum, though, does it? You know, usually there's some ripples in here and stuff like that, but that dam here, Linda, is stamped in the back of these birch trees, and these birch trees are so white because I stamped them out and then I blocked them off with the Dr. Martens like that. So, I don't know. that It, it, show, it showed up pretty well, so I got lucky on this one. I don't know. I, I don't know. It did. I, I used more um, spray adhesive, though, so I don't know if that helped with the evenness of the adhe you know, the adhering um, aspect of it. But um, yeah, it's already glued down. Thank you, uh, thank you, thanks for answering uh, Linda there. Um, I can't remember, Linda, have you tried the vellum layering like that before? Okay, so I'm adding in a little bit of this extra sh sh shadow work in here now too, since I kind of illuminated the um, the opposite side of these trees. So let's add in a little bit more shadow work on here. I was really happy with the way that that really seemed to kind of uh, pop those trees out a little bit more um, dimensionally, I guess. Okay, so Chris, Chris and I are going to have a Food of the Gods um, watch-along party. <laughs> We're going to have a Food of the Gods watch-along party on this uh, channel. Or, you know, the watch-along party, if... if, uh, if um, uh, Beavers, that movie was out. The IMAX Beavers was out there. We'll have to do that one. We'll have a Beavers watch along party as we stamp Beaver scenes or something like that. Actually, I said that jokingly, but that, that, that might be a bad idea. Not, not for Food of the Gods, but you know. Okay, so adding a little bit more shadow work under Those trees are really standing out to me now. Okay, now see, one of the things I didn't consider, which I just saw right here, is um, like see some of these where I've used these paint pens to go over the front of the tree. You know, maybe I'd have those, um, sh you know, those leaves kind of casting a little bit of a shadow behind it to make them stand out more, maybe. Stuff that I wasn't really considering here, but going forward, you know, I think it helps a little bit. 
Okay, now, also on, you know, that branch, that larger branch that I added in there, like right in here, maybe I can put some of this coming, you know, break it up a little bit in terms of the form, a touch like that. You know, it just wasn't, you know, some leaves in front of it too. So it can really embed it into that um, area like so. I'm gonna tell my brother that I was in a live stream and I mentioned food of the gods and someone, you know, someone knew what I was talking about here. I'm guessing that movie was like 77 or something like that. But as Chris uh, mentioned, um, it wasn't nominated that year for, um, it wasn't nominated for Best Picture. <laughs> Kay, Kay, you like uh, B movies, like horror movies? Watch for you watch Food of the Gods maybe. Okay, so let's hit this area down here. Let's hit this grassy area a little bit with some additional highlights. I, I don't think I'm gonna go in there and add um, any uh, animal down here. I think it would just if I put the animal in, in here, I would want it going in front of that, but it just that area is a little bit too um too dark, I think. Okay, it's like that. Thanks, Debbie. Glad you're liking it. I'm, I'm liking it more. Uh, you know, I didn't dislike it, but it's the highlighting that's doing it for me and the the depth of these. I mean, that really, they really look, su I don't know, not superimposed, but um, I, I'm forgetting the depth that you can get from uh, vellum, you know, just, I don't know when the last time I did this was. I, I, haven't, I haven't been doing vellum. Maybe I did one thing, because I didn't want to, I don't know, it feels weird saying, okay, everyone, I'll be back in two minutes, you know. But uh, I don't know, that vellum, if you haven't done vellum, I don't know, explore it a little bit. A lot of you have vellum, you know. One of the things that a lot of people said was, okay, I'm shaking up these, uh, the pink and purple pens right here. Um, but a lot of people said when I started playing around with the vellum a little bit was, um, yeah, they have vellum, you know, it's, you know, they've had it for years, you know, or something like that. A lot of people said they have, they've had it, but they haven't used it for years, which is my case. I think my pack of vellum was like 20 years old. Vellum, we're gonna, Chris, we're gonna, Chris, uh, you, you know, you're an artist. Do us, uh, do us a food of the gods, uh, uh, t-shirt design. We're gonna, we're gonna wear that one with pride, you know, we're gonna bring that one back. It's gonna be like a showing in like midnight theaters and stuff like that. 1976, I was real close there. Thank you, Kay. So what Linda is saying is um, that she wouldn't think there was a talent to adding dots uh, because she's so like an expert at it, you know. I don't know how you added those gigantic dots with that fire piece of yours, uh, Linda. The one, uh, I, th it might have been the. Th second or third panel or I don't know both okay so this is adding in violet you can't really see it too much because it is roughly the same value okay in terms of light and dark as the area that I'm applying it in okay but that's kind of what I want I want it to kind of harmonize in the background then I'll hit um, some of it with a little bit more um, pink
Um, let's see, it is August now, so I, I saw some posts of some uh, wildflowers somewhere, maybe in Washington or something like that, where you'd still get some of those wildflowers kind of coming in at uh, like the higher elevations or something like that. But um, all right, so what I did here, okay, so this is what Linda was talking about. When people first start using things like these highlights down here, those little white dots could represent like a white wildflower too, okay? But what I'm doing right here is I'm kind of clustering it um, if it represents a highlight, okay? Over here, it's all kind of evenly spread out. But if you want an area darker for shadows, it would stand to reason that you would add more black in that area, right? Okay, if you're using, or dark colors, okay? So with lighting, if you want to have something lighter, you condense those dots more, okay? And then they dissipate out, just as though if I'm doing some shading, in the darker regions you do this, and you kind of dissipate it like that, you know, out into the light, okay? But you do the opposite with li uh, highlighting. You have it lighter, you know, so you have more dots in a given area, okay? And then you kind of move it out like this into the shadow areas. So I'm just saying, I'm just showing it to you in a darker color, you know, so you can see what I'm talking about here. So, um, with something like this, a lot of times, or when people are doing stars or something like this, like in a starry sky, okay, um, this is what we all do. And I'm talking about me too, okay? When we're adding in stars, you notice how that, they're all kind of roughly about a quarter inch apart if you're on the metric system, I don't know, whatever that is. It's a certain amount of millimeters apart, okay? Whereas if you're doing a starry sky, it kind of looks a little bit more natural if, you know, you kind of have things a little bit more irregular. You know, you can have like a larger one here, there, but, um, and that's the same thing for like wildflowers. I kind of cluster them like this. Okay, then I kind of dissipate them a little bit like that. So that's kind of what's going on here. But if you're doing a highlight now, let's say there's like these ridges like this, okay, or a rock, okay, like this. Okay, now if I'm highlighting the tops of the rocks, I have more dots on the top of it like that, okay? And then I dissipate it. I spread them out a little bit more where they're going. Sorry, it's out of focus here. Okay, so. And let's say there's just a cluster of grass like this, okay? The grass never looks like that, or a cloud or anything. You put more on the top side of something, and then you just have it kind of more spread out down here, okay? So that's what's going on with these tufts of little grass here. So you have a little bit more, and then you kind of spread it out a little bit like that, okay? Here's one right here. I mean, it's wherever you want to do it. You don't have to do it over all of them. It would look a little bit too kind of symmetrical. I mean, I, you know, I, that's may, maybe going a little bit too much there, but um, that's the way you do it. You kind of cluster things like that a little bit more or just make them look a little bit more irregular, okay? Here's highlighting on this, you know, you can have a little bit of something like that, you know, catching some of that light, but then maybe just leave some of those other areas just as is, or maybe you just have some dots in a given area, okay? Like that. So kind of think a little bit more, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's random, but varied and yeah, I, that would be the main thing. So think varied a little bit. Now I, I added a little bit too much over here. So I'm just going to add and tone this in. And then what I'm doing with some of those white dots is I'm just turning them from white into green. So it's a green dot, okay? I mean, you can do stuff like this too. I mean, there's all kinds of different colors of paint pens too these days that you can go in there with. And I love that um, aspect of it. Okay, so anyways, so speaking of that, we have our pink right here and I have my little clusters of purple and let's say some of those, there's various shades of those, whatever flowers that represents. So I'm going in here and kind of roughly in those little clusters of um, purple, I'll add this little lighter, slightly brighter 
little clustering like that. This little area in here became a little bit boring to me, so I think it looks good with a little bit of this kind of ground cover of pink, and pink really harmonizes well with that green, like that. All right, so you have that little ground cover down there. It's subtle, you know, I'm not doing it with the... I guess you could do it with three millimeter paint pen. I just don't want to. <laughs> you know, I think that would be a little bit too much, you know, like that. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you can have a couple of them down there, like in the foreground or something like that. A couple bigger ones, kind of amidst, amongst the smaller ones or something like that. I don't know. But let's see. Um, All right, now this is, I never have any fear when doing my scenes, but if I'm going to stamp this on top of that, I don't want to mess it up. Because there's always something that you can kind of cover up, you know, in your pieces with, but um, let's see. Do I want to do it lighter too? Let me see, second generation would be a little bit lighter. I don't know if I want to go too light with this one, though. I think I'm just going to go full strength. All right. All right. I could feel a couple of you holding your breath there. <laughs> All right. So that little bit of birds in there. Oh, and um, let's see here. Uh, let's see my date and I made a pact oh. <laughs> that was a date night for you on uh, when you went to go see that uh, Chris <laughs> oh that's so funny back then like though like I said I was, you know, I was reasonably uh, scared with that one. Let me see, in 76, so I was, um, 76, I was nine when I saw that. So, yeah, but I saw it with my brother, too. I think my brother, I don't think, I don't know if my sister went. My sister was, no, my sister was in high school. I don't know, she didn't want to go with us then. Okay, white pigment ink, okay? I mean, here's the mistake that I've made on vellum pieces, okay? I don't know if it's a mistake, but you know how I like to add this, like, little misty type of thing all throughout my scene? See how much there's separation there is between these trees and the background there? I've made the mistake of kind of going into this area right here, into this area, in the, you know, in the background, in my sky and whatnot, but it closed the space in between everything that was so nicely separated from the vellum, okay? So I'm only going to use this in this mid-ground area, okay? And not use it anywhere in the foreground where everything is really crisp and separated by the use of the vellum. So that's, that's you know, that's what, one of those things that occurred to me before. It's like, I like the look of that mist down here, but it was so nicely spaced that it closed, like I said, it closed everything in, which the vellum is so nice in separating, okay? So, that being said, white uh, cotton ball here, okay? Is Froggy Fresh still on here? Froggy Fresh is at the, the, the 99 cent store or whatever, Dollar Tree or whatever, the the Q-tips didn't work for them very well. And I was just wondering if those were acrylic ones or not. So 100% cotton always works the best for me. Okay, starting in the lighter area and going in to... This is interesting too, because as I put this over this beaver dam right here, the beaver dam, I'm not really going over the beaver dam. Well, I am, I'm going in front of it, but the beaver dam is stamped on the back side of this vellum. So I'm really not putting any of this pigment ink over the top of any of the impression, you know, which is kind of, I don't know, just, I don't know, I don't know it doesn't really make any difference, but it's just kind of an interesting kind of notion. Um, so sometimes when I'm going over um, objects with this 
ink right here, this white pigment ink, sometimes it can blend in some of the color that I've applied down in those impressions, but it's not, it's on the back side of it. So you don't need to worry about it. I have, I have, <laughs> this is like a complete kind of, I don't know, I was playing around with stuff like this and I was playing around the dimension on here. I hope I haven't, you know, kind of given the impression that this uh, vellum here is like complicated, you know, to do. I mean, they can be, you know, like the easiest things you can possibly do. If you stamp these trees on like a quarter page piece, this um, photograph in the background would like cover the entire card practically. And you adhere those things together and you are done, you know. You can do this whole piece in here. You can put a moon on, you know, like a, a white piece of paper, you know, on here in the form of a moon. And then you can have that in the background and you just adhere this whole thing. And that background is like instantly applied without affecting anything going on in the foreground like that. It, it's, it's one of the reasons why I use that vellum is because... Um, there are certain aspects to it that that speed the whole process up, you know. You don't have to do, like, careful masking and all that. You can change out your background or whatever. So that's what I really like, in addition to the depth that it's creating. So see, there's that some of that white pigment ink right there. And the white pigment ink really harmonizes well because that impression in the background looks a little bit softer anyway. All right. Oh, Debbie, Goodbye. Have a great rest of the evening. Have a good night's sleep. Okay, so coming in like that. And let's bring some of that cloud over the front of this too. So let's put this little area in here like it's kind of, re you know, some of this little lighting is reflecting off of the, um, the, beaver dam and let's go into the now these birds maybe would have been better stamped on the other side of the vellum here but i think this is that's dry now right yeah okay so i'm going to make some of these birds a little bit lighter again this is what i've done i think i did that on the waterfall i mean the um 11 by 17 scene so i am adding some of this pigment ink on those smaller birds on the gull's image like that so that there's some depth that's not going to focus in here uh so the back ah okay i'm turning off this camera and turning back on here let me let me zoom in a little bit while i'm at it here Okay, coming on. Reminds me of a TV set in the 70s or 80s. Ah, it didn't focus in. What the heck is going on here? All right, let me zoom out all the way. It's almost like this camera is getting like heated up these days and my auto focus is not as in tune here. There, okay. But anyways, so trust me. Those the the birds in the background are lighter. <laughs> oh, and my camera here, my camera's exposing here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so anyways, white pigment ink up here, white pigment ink down there, a little bit more misty and atmospheric. And I think it looks farther back now than it did even you know more now than it did before this was applied in here, okay? So let's go like this. I think that looks pretty good. You can use some more of it up in the clouds like this. And photo stamping, I like using a little bit more pigment ink over the tops of some of those clouds. So the clouds seem a little bit more dimensional because they're a little bit lighter in some areas, okay? Okay, I'm going to bring a little of this into that branch there too. I think it looks pretty good. I'm not. I'm. I'm going to try to resist going anywhere else though. Okay, I'm just going to bring a little bit up into these leaves, like about like so. All right, I think that will do it. Am I forgetting anything? Let's see here. All right. Let's get this formatted here. All right.
right. Uh, here, let me grab that paper again here. One. Uh, I was looking for this. This feels really thick here with the um, with the um, the photo, that extra piece of paper, and then the card, and then the vellum. <laughs> this is like one of the thicker uh, pieces right here. And then we're gonna mount it on this, and then mount it on that uh, extra piece. It's gonna be like in some of these areas, it's gonna be like six layers of a. Uh, of a uh, you know material okay so oh let's see it's going about like that this tape really sticks like iron like it's supposed to it's a permanent adhesive okay let's see all right let me see let me get that exposure again Did I really use all these things in there? I guess I did. Okay, but going back to that vellum, I hope you I hope you try these types of things out. Um, I know a lot of you have the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White at this point in time too. Um, you might be able to use other types of medium, like if you have a gesso or something like that. Um, I don't know about a white acrylic. I hadn't thought about it before, but if you have like these pens, you might be able to just draw that on there with the acrylic paint pen. Yeah, I don't know. I'll try that out sometime. I, that might work. Like, like I said, the acrylic paint pen's not going to be quite as opaque, but maybe it doesn't need to be. Um, you might be able to just, yeah, just use it with the pen. Or do it with the pen. All right, is that straight? can't tell because this thing's like lifting up it's like dimensional here that paper is so th thick the scene is so thick all right so we have our we have two like bookmarks that we can do i love bookmarks i, I don't do that enough like hardly ever but every time i see people do like those elongated formatted um bookmarks i love them all right, here's this. This is so raised up here. You know what this feels like? Maybe not quite as thick, but it feels like, like illustration board or something like that. There's so many different layers. And I'm just using my glossy, dark glossy cardstock just because I have so much of it and I hardly ever use it for anything else. So. I don't think I got that real super straight, or did I? No. I think that's roughly about it right there. Yes, 
I can use a paper trimmer here, but sometimes I just, I don't know, when I adhere that on there, I don't get it straight, so I just kind of, I'm able to eyeball this afterwards. It's a little bit off. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm going a little bit um, thicker down below as a base, okay. All right. All right. Let's get my smudgy fingerprints off. Of course, I'm getting smudgy fingerprints over here now. Okay. Okay, so that is the scene. Let's see if you're getting, uh, yeah, that's okay. The camera's exposed roughly for how that looks there. All right. So there it is. There's a beaver dam in vellum, okay? I think that worked out pretty good with the vellum because I like how this... Now, we could do this in different ways. Let's say we're just doing this over the top of a piece of cardstock. Well, first of all, you'd have to mask off all of these trees after you stamp them. That, I don't know. That, to me, that would be maddening. I, I don't know. I hate doing that type of stuff, that type of tedium. Um, but... Having that, that would be, look really complicated if that was stamped out the same darkness as these trees. That one, it recesses enough visually for me um, to work with this. You know, otherwise it would stand to get really busy. You know, you have all these trunks up here. There's six trunks right here. And then you'd have all that woodwork going on in the background. So for me, this really solved um, that type of uh, visual issue in terms of depth you know, and creating that separation between the foreground and the background. Um, yeah, but uh, vellum can be really, really uh, beneficial for um, certain types of uh, looks and, um, you know, creating that type of depth. And for me, it's about the ease of doing that, okay? One of the things that for me, um, that I kind of my, it's like at this philosophy or whatever, you try to get, um, I'm trying to think of what that term is. It's, um, it's the, it's like a no wasted movement type of thing. Okay. So it's about getting to, um, some area in the most efficient way possible. Now, I'm not always doing that because I'm trying to figure these things out as I'm going along here, but like doing things like this, being able to stamp this out and just, you know, paint those in on the background like that. I mean, it, it's not only for speed, but just, you know, in being able to do anything that you want back there too came into play, but it's also looking deeper in terms of um, dimension in the end result because of that translucent aspect of the... Uh, the vellum, I mean, it helped there. But I found that um, on this piece right here, it was really kind of a an exploration of certain things. I was able to do just about whatever I wanted in there. You know, I mean, that was, you know, like, I, I made some mistakes in here. I, you know, I, I adhere, you know, I used that full photograph. I should have just cut it off like right around in here, you know, because that photograph was showing right through the vellum in here. So I used that piece of copy paper, you know, in here, but where I should have used like a, you know, a better cardstock for that application of color. But again, it didn't really, really matter in the end result because that blue was applied. And by the time you throw that vellum over the top of it, I mean, there were, um, there were tape um, guy, you know, I use that tape in the background and that, you know, I was able to see those tape 
kind of ridges on my color applications, but that kind of all, you know, for the most part disappeared. I mean, if I look really super closely, I can kind of see a little bit of a, that cross in there where I've applied that, but all of that kind of disappears. And or if you got something wrong, then you just, on this scene, I just went over it a little bit more with, you know, my paint pen, you know, in those areas. And it just creates extra leaves in there. So you create extra depth anyway. So why not do that? The one thing that I wish that I could do a little bit on this one, and let's put some fallen leaves down in here, um, is I wish I could um, emboss a little bit of my paint pen foliage work up there, where those ones would be really dimensional and sticking out, so I'd do paint pen dots, and before they dried, I would throw on some um, of the clear embossing powder onto them, clear detailed embossing powder, and I would heat them up. But again, I don't, I don't want to do that because I just know that, that something would happen with the, um, the vellum adhesion to the background there. You know, that glue would come undone, and this vellum would get puckered, and I would get that, those ridges in there, you know, which... And it would probably shrink some of the vellum too. So I just, I don't know. I don't want to do that um, on this piece right here. Not after I got it, not after it came out so flat, <laughs> which it almost never does. Okay. But like I said, you just kind of, you just kind of roll with it and just kind of make that three dimensional kind of part of it. I don't know. You can just kind of work it into the scene a little bit more like that. And sometimes when you get it nice and flat, and then you kind of work out a little ridge with your fingernails or something like that. And it's like, okay, it's flat. But then you find out the next day that it popped up again. You know, it might happen. So uh, just kind of go into it expecting that type of thing to happen. So if it does happen, you just kind of play around with it a little bit and kind of incorporate it into the scene. But, you know, and if it doesn't happen, that's all the better, right? You know? It's better than going into it saying, okay, you know, and then letting that bother you. If I had ones where I've done two layers of vellum on top of one another, and though that one came out horrific, and I almost didn't uh, use it going forward, but then what I did was there was all these ridges everywhere, and I just kind of incorporated them, and I added, like, shadows or something like that, and the scene came out better looking as a result anyways than from not having them on there. I prefer that there was ridges were on there and I did the shadow work anyway but I wouldn't have thought to do that shadow work to try to hide them had I not had those ridges to try to I don't know obscure so okay so froggy fresh said yeah q-tips from the dollar tree suck uh don't get don't use q-tips from uh, the dollar tree you know on these types of applications here uh yeah so on the back side of the vellum well I think the dam isn't vivid I think the dam is rather kind of um uh, softer. So, yeah. Um, otherwise, the dam would have been much darker, um, Linda. It yeah, it didn't knock it down as much as I thought it would. I thought um, stamping the dam on the back of the vellum would have knocked it down 10%, but I think it knocked it down 5 um, And I, again, I, I used, um, instead of using um, uh, Brilliance Black, I use the stays on. I you know, experiment with the stays on on this one. So that stays on. I never used stays on before. So here's what here's what the stays on did for me on this one. It allowed me to use these um, foreground bushes over the top of the wax. I used a lot of colored pencil down here. Okay. It, most of my coloring was with the colored pencils. Okay, I completely forgot about the uh, alcohol inks. I could have used the alcohol inks on here too. I would have done it on the back side of these trees and stuff like that. But I don't know, the colored pencils work just fine. Okay, so the vellum, and the, the vellum, I was surprised at the level of darkness the uh, stays on gave me. Okay, sometimes I, I've used the brilliance before because, because I thought the brilliance, you know, being a thicker, very surface oriented pigment type of ink would be the darkest, um, of all blacks, but that stays on did pretty well on there. So I have no complaints about the stays on there. I'm just going to have to clean off my stamps now, you know, the stays on someone mentioned they don't like cleaning it off and neither do I. So, 
Um, have I tried yeeting? Oh, <laughs> I haven't tried that. You forgot to count to 10. Did you say you were going to stamp a word? No, I wasn't going to stamp a word. That could have been cool on here though. Like up in here, if I didn't do the birds. So the birds ended up being my focal point. But this would have been a perfect spot for some, uh, like a word stamp or a quote stamp. Or you can do another word, I don't know. If I did a word down here, I would superimpose it. I would put it like on a separate piece somewhere in here. Uh, let's see. Genie, uh, let's see, always, it's not always flawless and he doesn't struggle with mistakes. I don't do mistakes. I might do a mistake, but it's just something that is a process that has to be um, something that might have to be obscured. So I don't know. Yeah. Now, if I I didn't want to, you know, mess up the, those birds there, though, because those birds are on the vellum, you know, and I didn't want to have to completely obscure that. If I OK, so if I screw up on those birds uh in comes the uh the word stamp you know stamped on a separate piece of paper and matted and plopped right down in there or something like that right who knows maybe it'd come out better than this result though um swag equity and art school now art school was a completely different thing. I, le I learned all this stuff this process they talked about process in school you know all the time and kind of doing things fearlessly but i you know i totally get where people like want things perfectly all along every step because I, that's what the, the philosophy we had in school. And we didn't want to do um, kind of comps and stuff like that and roughs. We just want to get in the final piece and have, have it perfect every time. So I get where everyone's coming from and stamping, you know, it's like, oh my God, that, there's that little thing right there, you know, it's bothering, you know what I mean? So it's like these days I realize, especially in scenic stamping, how you can just cover everything up and like I said, it's the white pigment ink for me that, um, I don't know, that solves everything. I didn't really need the white pigment ink in this one as much as I usually do, but I think it looks good in here on these little spots, you know, in a couple different areas. But yeah, um, I don't know, things tend to come together. It was a, I don't know, I learned that uh, after using that white pigment ink for like 15 years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, Linda. This is a masking nightmare without the vellum, you know. I mean, I've, I have seen... Now, if I was to do, like, masking on here, I mean, I don't know. Chris, do you use liquid frisk? You know, you, Chris, you use... You probably use... Now, does everyone else use liquid frisk in here? I think that's what I would use on here. I don't want to be cutting, like, these things out of, like, a paper and post-it note or something like that. But I think I, if I was to do any type of masking with something like this... You know, we're talking, yeah, I would use a liquid frisk, which is this little thing that you kind of paint on that's kind of clear and, I don't know, it's almost like rubber cement or something like that. And then when you stamp everything on there, then you just peel off the, you know, you just rub off the liquid frisk. You can probably use a rubber cement pickup, as, as a matter of fact, with that. I haven't used liquid frisk in, I don't know, forever. I used to have, like, frisk film, too, that we used to use, too. But that would be a little bit dimensional, and I definitely wouldn't want to have to go through the process of using that either. Too much work for me. So, I don't know. Yeah. I go for the easiest things possible in terms of the easiest thing and most direct route to get the results that I'm going for. That's what I'm going for in my pieces, okay? I don't go for, you know, uh, I might take time on a scene and you know, do that, but I don't want to go through intricate processes that are precarious or something like that. I think everyone thinks that I do, but I'm going for easy applications to get the result that I'm going after, you know. I don't even want to. I'll put my time into the designs, you know, but I don't want to put a bunch of tedium into the usage of them, you know, with something like this. I don't, that's not fun for me, you know, so... I don't know, for me, like in this scene, you know, I thought that photograph gives me, gave me a really great look in the background, so I just used that. Um, and that's where the vellum kind of freed me up to be able to use that. I couldn't, you know, I think, you know, if I was, if I had this dam on here and this was like a piece of paper, I wouldn't want to cut out that 
you know, photograph and paste it down on the front of that. So there's like ridge coming out and then cutting out this little portion of it. Yeah, who wants to do that, you know? Uh, not me. So again, for that type of look, the vellum was really great for that. And it sounds like, you know, I, I'm, you know, I mean, there, there's, you know, the, the vellum, you got to spray, you know, use that spray adhesive. It sounds like I'm kind of promoting vellum over any type of usage. No, you know, I mean, I hardly ever use the vellum, but um, for certain types of things where we're looking through things like this, you know, uh, I don't want to kind of do all that cutout work. You know, it's not my, uh, that's not the fun kind of part for me in doing these pieces. There are some people that do do a lot of intricate things, okay? And they look awesome, but uh, uh, I'm too lazy for that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to be truthful. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. I haven't used it on stamping. Or Chris, you haven't used that. Uh, I'm, but you have it, though, right? Because you do all that uh, type of painting work and watercolors and all that. But yeah, for something like this, you know, I, that's what... There, there are certain types of times when I've, you know, been stamping where I thought, okay, I could use some liquid frisk um, for this, for whatever type of purpose, you know, it is. The liquid frisk would create a little bit of a thing. So again, I would just do a very thin layer and leave some of the areas on the side exposed because you are creating a little bit of ridge for something to stamp over. And then if you stamp over it, you know what I mean? Where if you mask off too much, then there's gonna be this big area where it didn't get in there. So you wanna, just like with um, using a post-it note or a piece of paper or something like that, I think doing a little bit of under masking would um, be beneficial, but I don't know, you just have to get familiarized with it and figure out how thick that liquid frisk is. Yeah. I'm with you, Candy. A mistake is just an opportunity to create something different and oftentimes better, I would add on to that. Yeah. So a lot of times for me, like I said um, in the past, you know, when people have a tough kind of um, design type of consideration that's going on in their pieces, um, to not toss their pieces out. It's just kind of a, something along the way. And, and like I've said in a lot of pieces, like Linda, you know, some of your pieces where you've mentioned that, I, oh, I started on this one, whatever, and I, you know, I put it on the side. I thought, oh my God, that, I thought those were some like breakthrough um, types of uh, scenes where you've figured out and incorporated some new technique, you know, to solve that problem, you know, whatever that uh, design issue existed. And it enhanced the scene um, in those areas or whatever, you know, going forward. And then you can always use those ones going forward after that. So I'm trying to think of some things that I've incorporated in here, maybe, um, you know, along those lines. But I haven't done a lot of vellum pieces. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I've done twelve. Something like that, because you know, I got kind of uh, obsessed with it for a while. It was like that vellum kind of finally um, solved my um, uh, birch tree issues. Because I always want those birch trees to be nice and light. But if you're coloring, you know, if you stamp those out and you want some color in between them, you know what I mean? You're gonna have to work around them or something like this. But now you just kind of stamp them out, you paint them in the backside or whatever, and just color them on, you know, uh, lay it, you know, lay it down on whatever background you want. The thing about those birch trees too, if you want to do some kind of really stark, you know, um, dark scene, I think it'd be interesting to have these like this, just like this, maybe not with the yellows and things like that, but if you did like a, just if you had a black piece of paper like this, and like I said, if you cut out, um, you know, a moon in here like this, you know, you can put a little bit of a haze around it or something like that. But you can have this moon with these birch trees clear in the background. And then in between, it would just be, I'm not talking about with the beaver dam. I'm talking about just some moon going on back in there. And you can just, you can put this overlay. It just becomes this opaque overlay that you can lay down over whatever background you want. 
I know someone should do that. Someone should do this, uh, or I should do it, you know, some sort of um, background um, dark scene like this. So I just clear this out. Or you can take a photograph of a full moon outside, or you can print out a full moon photograph or something like that. You know, it could be a moon, harvest moon, or a lunar eclipse, you know, <laughs> or something like that. You know, and you can put this just this birch tree overlay over it and look like this is being illuminated by the white moonlight or something like that too so it just i don't know it just solves a lot of design uh, methodology considerations in terms of removing all of that tedium for you you know and I, I don't find that stamping these out and taking a paintbrush and just painting those in on the back side of the vellum is hard or anything like that i don't find that tedious work you know because it takes like i don't know for me to do that, I don't know if it, I don't know, did it, I don't know if it took a minute to do, you know, but, um, yeah. Washi tape masking, okay, that is, I've heard of that tape, but I haven't done that before. Um, let's see, my frisket is expensive stuff, and I save it for watercolor. Are you talking about the, not the liquid, fr I'm talking about the liquid frisk, though, Chris. Yeah, I wouldn't want to use frisket film on a scene, unless I'm using it over and over again, like for the same imagery or something like that, which I guess could be done, you know, like if you had these trees, especially stuff that you wanted white, you can cut those out in a frisket and then, you know, peel that up and then, you know, cause it's a, it's a movable, you know, adhesive that's on there, you know, provided, you know, it didn't get too dusty or something like that, you'd be able to use it again. So you'd use these ones over here and you wouldn't frisk off this, you'd use it over here, then you would peel it off here and then put it over there, you know. You'd use it for those same trees like that. So you don't you wouldn't need six trunks here, you just have three. But again, I wouldn't want to do that though. That's why I'm using the uh that's why I'm using the uh the vellum here. So Let's see. Sometimes using the liquid masking will smudge the color with glossy cardstock. A semi-matte or matte works better. Excellent tip there, uh, Linda. I would imagine the liquid frisk is like some kind of solvent in there, keeping that um, kind of in solution. So I wonder, well, the liquid frisk would work with something like a Stazon, like a solvent ink, if the liquid frisk would put that back into solution. So it would be something to, you know, consider too. Um... Spring at the Dam, is that the name of this one right here? My uh, name for this one would be like Vellum Dam. <laughs> vellum, Vellum Birch or whatever, I don't know, yeah. The Pond, The Pond. The Pond sounds like the name of a movie, which would be good for here too. I am thinking about those word stamps, though. I might, you might find uh, some sort of like, you know, you could put like this little placard down here. I would do it in like white or something like that. And then I would have another border, smaller border around it. And I'd put it right down here, like something, you know, it would say uh, whatever. It could be like, you know, it, someone took a photograph of it or something like that. It could say, uh, you know beaver, beaver, whatever, something pond, you know, Miller's Pond, uh, you know, um, 1986 or something like that, you know, or something like that. Froggy Fresh found their Where's Waldo stamps. I was watching um, the show yesterday that had all these Waldos in it. It was Wellington Paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those um, mockumentary shows, and there was a bunch of boys Waldos in there. So it's interesting you said that, because we were just watching it last uh, yesterday, I think it was, or two days ago. Food of the Beavers. If you just joined in, we we're talking about Food of the Gods. If you, I don't know, does anyone else know that movie? I was shocked that uh, anyone knew it, but uh, I don't know. Chris knew it and remembers it well enough to remember uh, the production values of that show. Um, okay, Donna, I mentioned this earlier, but that's a really good point. I haven't tried embossing vellum, and I would on this one if I wasn't 
super concerned because this is a photograph in the background, okay? So it's on photo paper, and that would have a tendency of really bowing and puckering if you had a lot of heat there. But I really would have liked to add some of these dots down there in the in the acrylic paint pen and add um, a clear embossing powder on it and then emboss those so you'd have these raised embossed shiny leaves coming out of that to make this piece look even more dimensional looking. I think it looks really you know, kind of 3D with, this, with these birch trees on here, but if you added in that little element like that, or if I embossed like the, uh, the bushes down here, you know, with a VersaFine Claire, but that vellum on here, plus the, um, um, the spray adhesive that's sticking this whole vellum piece onto that whole background. You should have seen that background. It looked crazy um, without this um, scene on there. Um, but it had the photograph on there, then it had this other piece of paper down there, so it was all ridgy and everything like that. Plus I had all this tape running to adhere all those things on here. I think any kind of heat application to this would just completely make the, um, the vellum pucker, the photograph bow, and for the, some of that adhesion to go back into solution, to melt, to bead underneath there, you know. I don't think it would be a good thing to do on here. I think it would—it's just—it would be too precarious for that, um, for that reason. But I—I I don't know. I even like heat embossing. Heat embossing um, foil is kind of precarious because of the metallic nature of it, and sometimes there's a clear seal over the top of foils. But I think heat embossing vellum would be even more kind of precarious because of that. I was mentioning when I adhered this vellum to it's sometimes you're going to get these um, little be you know like air pockets in here okay and I didn't get it on this one like for the first time ever all right but I mean if you start melting and you know bringing a lot of heat into that vellum like that I just think it would just go it it it'd go a little bit crazy maybe if you were doing some heat embossing and you had this like you know, like painters do where you have it all tacked down and everything is like totally sealed up and kind of not moving you know and then you do your painting then you peel all that up. maybe if you tack everything down completely and it's almost like stretched out you know where you apply the heat and then pull it off and then just let it cool down before you kind of pull that maybe that would work i don't know yeah <laughs> on vellum pond that's awesome um, yeah, that is a good one, uh, Chris. I, Chris seconded that one. Right. I like that one. Because it says what it kind of it is, you know? Because one of the big features of this one is vellum. Let's go with that one. Yeah. Okay, so anyways. Uh, there, that is... Try your vellum out. Give it a, give it a whirl. It is really fun, not just for this, but anytime, anytime, anything where um, tedium, in terms of the masking uh, masking aspect, would come into play. I just think that um, the vellum really, really alleviates a lot of that. As far as the vellum that I'm using. And it, I didn't pick this out for any other re I didn't pick this out, first of all, for my use in stamping was I just happened to have it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try that. But I wasn't thinking about it in terms of how I've been using it a lot. It just kind of revealed itself when I thought, okay, I have the uh, opaque um, Dr. Martens too. But um, one of the people that used to do a lot of um, stamping and they have um, their pieces up in the gallery of the website she used to do a lot of stamping I, I i don't she did i think she did stamp on both sides but then she would color pencil it but you know it i thought we could take it even even 
further, a step further with the op opacity of the uh, the Dr. Martens. But just stamping stuff out, you know, sometimes, you know, a lakeside cove on the front and a mountain in the background that's colored in with pencils, just that translucent aspect really pushed the mountains in the background. So, you know, we're doing all kinds of other things with this one right here, you know, with the point, with the paint pens and things like that used on the front and the back. Um, but it could just be, you just stamp things out on the back and the front and then you just, um, you know, uh, colored in with the colored pencils too. So that's, you know, perfectly um, great use of vellum too. You don't have to add in all these other things like that. So um, using, okay, so Donna says, maybe not heat embossing, but using a ballpoint. Oh, so you're saying so that you can raise these things. So that would be really cool. So you take something like this before you adhere it down here and say, you know where these trees are going. This is what I would do. I would stamp out those birch trees first, okay? Then you emboss these from the back, okay? So they're kind of like a little ridge sticking out from the back of this paper. And then I would do that white um, paint and then go in there. The reason why you don't do the white paint first is because, you, you know, when you start scoring into it from the backside, you know, you'd be, you'd be scratching off all the paint, you know? But if you wanted these... Um, to stick out like that, that'd be kind of interesting. Or if you wanted some of these areas, I guess you can kind of punch it from the back a little bit. But if you're talking about like that type of embossing, I think that would be really cool. Because um, just by accident, one of those times when I did this, these, there was ridges, there were ridges all over the place because I did a double um, layer of vellum. That didn't work out too good because the the back layers, you know, the bottom layers like that, in the back of this one right here, by the time you put another piece of vellum on top, it was like, you couldn't see anything, like three layers into it. So it didn't even really show, but that might be kind of interesting, you know, with the vellum. So you can, you can do something like that. Anything you want raised. I knew someone that did photo stamping where they stamped like say a waterfall or a bunch of rocks. And then they embossed out from the back of the photograph that rock. So it was like certain rocks were raised, you know, or something like that. Let's see. I don't know who that is. Mar Marjor. Huh. What did they do? Did they do some kind of um, technique on there? Oh, with the embossing, are you saying? Thanks, PJB Stamper. Yeah, give Vellum a try, Chris. You probably have Vellum, right? Yeah. Yeah, the on Vellum Pond. <laughs> People are going to think, wait, what is that? But then when they, if they watch it, then, you know, they'll get it right there. Uh, okay, 55-pound Vellum, yeah. You emboss from the back and it goes, oh, is, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Someone mentioned that, Don. I forgot about that. Yeah, it kind of stretches that vellum a little bit, right? Okay, I get it. Try that, Donna. Oh, with that little ball to, yeah. And then someone used to use, I remember um, the people that used to use, do that kind of vellum thing. I think they used a mouse pad or something like that. I don't know if right, that sounds kind of familiar. Something that would give a little bit. Um, I've never done, is, is that what they call dry embossing there? Okay. Clear acetate layering. I love, do I thought you took off Raggy Fresh. I love doing clear acetate layering. Oh, see, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you can add on another layer with some clear acetate. Oh, so th that would be kind of interesting. You know, people mentioned, um, the uh, the stays on colors. Could you stamp stays on colors on some acetate then? And because uh, it would stick, right? But then it would be transparent though. But you can add on another layer in here. Or if you can do one of those shadow box types of things, can you imagine that if you had that in there in like a little shadow box and you put this down here, and then you had that acetate or something like that where you had more leaves on the acetate or something like that, or something you know and you had that kind of adhered to the glass or something like that that might be kind of interesting too you know where it would be you know these raised kind of things separating the 
acid or I, I guess you could stamp it right on the glass too if it stays on right or you can boss it on the glass something like that would be kind of interesting or maybe on the back side of the glass i don't know so i don't know you're blowing my mind with uh, some different possibilities here in terms of a uh, dimension Someone here needs to start doing some shadow box things too. Like I loved uh, the shadow box one that I did way back when. I haven't done it since, but I used reindeer grass, like little moss at the base of, you know, some tall tree trunks. And there was a path going back to a cabin, I think it was. Um, but yeah, like all types of three dimensional things like that would be really fun. So. Um, yeah, all right. Someone who was in Food of the Gods there. Uh, the one oh, with that little ball tool. I haven't done dry embossing. I'll have to try that sometime. I've always wanted to try that one with the photo, um, with the photo stamping too, because it's that photo stamping, that photo um, paper, it seemed like it worked great for um dry embossing like that punching out those rocks like that you couldn't really see it there's a bunch of um, scenes that are done in the stampscapes gallery but you know those photographs are taken you know i don't know what pre-digital i think i don't know maybe there isn't a digital age but um you can't really see like the dimension on there you know the rocks that are really standing out and stuff like that but i think she she used to do um when she started embossing she started embossing everything in terms of the photo stamping scenes um and that was um debbie beals um who has a bunch of uh, pieces up in the gallery she owns a store down here in san diego Okay, one stylus tools stays on works on acetate. Okay, well that's probably what you're using on the acetate, right, Froggy Fresh? Are you using anything else other than stays on on the acetate? Nothing else would stick, right? I don't think I. I'm trying to think if I have any of those stylus. The styluses we're talking about for the embossing, they're those little metal things with that little metallic ball at the end of it, right? I would do a layer of solid cardstock, then a layer of vellum, then a layer of acetate. Ah. So the acetate, the acetate would be made, would the acetate be the same size as the cardstock and vellum then? Would you just do a, an entire overlay of it? It wouldn't just be like something in the foreground that you would just cut out, you know, roughly around the size of the uh, shape of the object, right? You would do the whole thing then? Is that how you would do it, Froggy Fresh? Hello, Beverly. You're just in time. <laughs> I'm just joking, Beverly. We're finishing off here, but if you like the scene, you know, you can watch the uh, the replay here. But Beverly, this was um, vellum. This is a photograph in there. The dam was stamped on the backside of this vellum, okay? And then I used uh, some of the pens on the backside of the vellum and on the front side. And then we stamped these birch trees and then painted them in with this uh, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, which made them opaque. And then we just spray adhesive on the back of the, uh, in between this and that photograph in the background and, you know, some of that card stocked in there and then uh, adhered it. So we we're just talking about kind of the ease of this type of thing where you have something in background here and not having to do all masking and frisk and all that type of stuff using vellum here so we're talking about different ways we can do um, add additional layers on here um, um, froggy fresh mentioned the uh, the clear acetate um, we're bringing you know some very people are really bringing up some really great ideas here with um, um, emboss dry embossing so embossing the back of these trees here and then when you emboss it it makes that vellum kind of go you know a little bit lighter and whiter so and then not only that but they would be like raised 
tree trunks on here. So that'd be a perfect application for a uh, um, vellum because it, you know, that vellum, you know, it's kind of malleable for that, you know, that purpose here. PJB, you got to get up at 3 a.m. My goodness. Good night. Uh, uh, we'll see you at 3 a.m. here in the chat. <laughs> Okay, all the layers the same size. Okay, so I've never done stamping on clear acetate before, so <clears throat> that would be really cool. Wait a minute, how would you how would you merge the acetate to the other layers though? Um, that's what I want to know. Okay, bye, Chris. Try out that uh, try out that monochromatic and uh, and your vellum, uh, but but especially the monochromatic. Those are solid, or oh, sold with the balls in different. Di okay, yeah. I have one or two of those, I think. From the really tiny to about one centimeter. Wow, that one centimeter. Um, have you used the one centimeter one before? It'd be huge. That'd be perfect for like a, like a big rock or something like that. And with the stampscapes, I'm thinking. But yeah, Beverly, so the Beverly, I don't know if you've used the vellum before. So Beverly, see these trees right here are a lot darker because I stamped them on the front of the vellum. It's hard to tell because they're just lines, but, um. And you can tell, right? I mean, I did add a little bit of white pigmenting, but this beaver dam's a little bit lighter. It's like a 90%, 80, now it looks 85% uh, gray. But the, the black here on the front of the vellum is much darker. So this is kind of, it pushes these that image uh, into the distance a little bit more. And then I used a little bit of white pigment ink in here too, so. A um, little bit of fog, but I didn't use it here in the foreground so that this foreground looks really close to us as opposed to this more distant part. But the vellum makes it easier to do um, certain types of imagery where if you are too lazy like I am to do a bunch of masking on here, like if it was just done on a single piece of cardstock, the vellum really um, creates the, a nice solution for your lazy stamper, i.e. me, here to do that type of thing. I'll spend a lot of time on a scene, you know, I'll do a Love My 17 scene, so I'm not lazy in terms of that, but I am lazy in terms of certain types of processes that I don't find really fun to do um, in stamping. I'll do them if I have to, you know, if I absolutely have to with something, but I usually try to avoid um, like these types of things where I would have to mask off in between trees. If I'm doing these trees like this, a lot of times I'm just kind of taking a paper, you know, paper towel or something like that if I have a tree behind there, but I don't usually have something right running through the whole, you know, row of trees like that that would require a lot of masking for me. And it's not, uh, that's too advanced for someone like me. <laughs> yeah, okay, wow. That's a big embossing uh, diameter there, right there. Uh, the larger the ball, I guess the the more you know, kind of um, force you have to use into it to to get that embossed part off the front layer, like that. I, I I would guess there. Okay, it's oh, it's designed to use okay with foam. Okay, got it. Huh? Dip dots used them to do dip dots with ink huh liquid ink rather than pads got it got it froggy fresh you used a liquid solvent to adhere everything to a, a liquid solvent not super glue but the main ingredient in super glue really Just, uh, what solvent would that be Clear acetate cloudy. Okay, I believe that. Huh. 
vellum glue would work to adhere the acetate but applied on the corners rather than the whole page. Well, that's what I was wondering, Linda. I was wondering if you do like the whole thing, wouldn't it interfere with the clear aspect of it? But there's a liquid solvent. But what makes that adhere to everything though? If it's just the solvent. And when I think of solvent, I'm thinking of things like uh, mineral spirits and turpentine and stuff like that. Huh. Not something that would adhere. Vellum tape. Huh. Vellum tape. Huh. Mostly to for acetate windows in modern railroad. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. I know we can probably look something like that up, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Clear, clear, uh, acetate, I don't know, acetate adhesion or something like that. You know, I'm trying to think of the word uh, search parameters we would use to look something like that up. I don't know. Froggy Fresh is doing the research for us, though. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the search parameters is, um, Froggy Fresh, please look that up. You know, yeah. All right, so anyways, uh, thanks for joining in. I think I'll call this one uh, On Vellum Pond. Sounds like a good one there. This looks like a nice little fishing hole here for someone to go fishing at, you know. I love how that uh, vellum takes some, um, how you can write on vellum that smooth kind of, you know, but a little bit of texture um, application of the pigment ink like that, or the uh, acrylic, acrylic ink like that. So anyway, uh, no, don't go look it up, Froggy Fresh. We don't want to do that. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know, does anyone else want to know that? I mean, if Froggy Fresh can find it, you know, that'd be good. Um, when are we going to learn about, adhe you know, adhering acetate onto something? You know, never. So I guess we might as well find out right now. If they can find it. I know, I, I, I just, I know, that blows me away that, I know, so you would use that over an entire, but okay, so here's the thing too. Okay, so if you're using a solvent, let's say I stamp out more of these um, types of uh, leaf elements like this, and maybe they're done in a stays on yellow or whatever, green, you know, to go with those colors like that. So we have light, dark, and light. But then if you go with the solvent over the top of that stays on, isn't that going to completely put the Oh, but what you do is you put the stays on on the top of the uh, the um, um, the uh, clear the clear acetate, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the, yeah, okay. And then the solvent would be on the underside of it. Then okay, figuring it out here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Let us know, Froggy Fresh. I'm curious about that. Or give it a try and see if it uh, see if it works. Be our be our test uh, tester for us. And uh, yeah, but it, yeah, it's a okay. So I don't even have like colored um, um, stays on inks. No, I have one. I have some one ultramarine or something like that that I haven't even opened yet. But uh, yeah, I'd be curious about that. So anything for extra depth, right? All right, everyone. So anyone, uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Uh, if you're checking this out in the background and if you still have to be on, thanks for joining in. Thanks for everyone. Thanks, Donna, Froggy Fresh, Donna, Beverly, Froggy Fresh. <laughs> I think everyone took off by now. We've done with the scene for like 45 minutes or something like that. But um, anyway, fun with vellum. That could be another just total title of this or a, a playlist or something like that. But um I don't know. Like, I don't know. I think like 80% of my vellum pieces have been with the birch trees because I love that application of them for those uh, that purpose right there. But 
The first one I did was um, Lakeside Cove, and I did, needed to do more of those ones like that. I just, I'm hooked on the, I just love the birch trees like that. Anything that has to be light over dark, in theory, or looks best as light over dark, that vellum is uh, an awesome way to do that type of application without having to mask them all off. So I really like that. Okay, so thanks everyone. Thanks for joining in everyone and we'll see you hopefully on the next live stream.